Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Skip the place of encounter. So the starting point of any kind of results and that which will last is an encounter. Everybody say an encounter. You must pay the price to know God. Please get the teaching, last week's teaching. I don't want to go over it again. Knowing God requires time. Knowing God requires passion. Knowing God requires prioritizing him above all things. Carnality is not having money. Carnality is not having materials. Carnality is an attachment. The attachment you have, a poor person can be carnal. You've just not had enough physical materials to help you demonstrate the carnality. Are we together now? And um, there are many, many carnal people in the body of Christ attached to things, possessions, money, cars, material things here and there. And um, you must pay the price to know God. Number two is the price of genuine submission to authority. I taught us about that and I'm glad that many people are beginning to understand this. There is an imbalance of authority. There is an imbalance of submission that has been taught for many years in the body of Christ. It is the imbalance of usurping people's rights and making men demigods. That's an error. It's unscriptural. There is a place for submission and I took out time to explain to us that the purpose of authority is for protection, provision, and promotion. Nobody promotes himself. Is that true? And um, I know we are all in Christ, but the election of grace has separated people into strata. You violate God's system of blessing, you will pay for it. Everybody has access to the Christ, but God has designed that there is a system by which men receive results one of it is authority so there is an imbalance of authority where people do not have rights again they don't have brains men of god become the gods of people they tell you when to eat they tell you when to have another child they tell you no 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 all the, that is rubbish it's just the insecurity of men on rampage so they spiritualize it and carve out a group of people that can find victims of their insecurities that's in balance praise the lord paul said follow me as i follow christ in other words if at any point you don't find me following christ do not follow me i want us to be very very clear about the concept of authority there are many insecure men and women of god well-meaning but they carry their complexes from poor backgrounds. They get filled with the Holy Spirit. And you know, Africa is a very loyal continent. We are loyal to men of God. We are loyal to pastors and churches. And sometimes it is that loyalty that has become the unbecoming of people. They were doing well until a man came into their life in the name of fatherhood and mentorship and wrecked and destroyed their life. They made people to leave jobs when they shouldn't leave jobs. They made people to not take drugs when they should take drugs. They made people to all kinds of things and destroy people's lives. Separated husbands and wives when they have no business separating because of some kinds of hilarious vision. So we must be careful. Submission is important. Authority is important. So that's one side of the imbalance. The other side of the imbalance is those who in a bit to address what i just explained now tell people there's no such thing as authority everybody can access god no you fight the body of christ you lose there is a system with which the church was built are we together the bible tells us that the church was built like a building he said every house is built by some man then he says god is the builder of all our work with god is based on relationship but kingdom advancement is based on covenant and i've explained it to us the way that god operates on earth is that all his multifaceted dimensions are resident within individuals they become the portals through which the generation experiences that dimension of god so prosperity for instance god finds a man 
opens his understanding to an unusual dimension of God in that area and then makes that man a symbol a portrait a representation of that possibility so that every other man on earth who must enter that dimension must do it in alignment to both God and that system he has set up you will never enter that that you may believe in God but if you do not believe in what that individual represents and submit to it you will never enter that dimension no man will work greatly in the healing ministry insulting Benny Hinn no man will work greatly in prosperity and faith insulting Kenneth Copeland even if you believe you have more revelation than him he's more than a human being he's a system that communicates a dimension of God's reality the Bible is full of mysteries and um, I wish I had time I don't want to go back to walk all of those remember there was a time when the nation of Israel wanted to fight war they were fighting war and Moses these guys had their swords but behind the scene there was a man who was lifting his rod is that true the Bible says as he lifted the rod although the people were the ones doing the physical fighting but the results were controlled by one man's hand now watch this the Bible says a time came when Moses' hand was getting weak the wisest thing to do is to say sir you are an elder just sit down let me help you is that not true the wisest thing to do is to help the man not everything can be done by everybody ask Saul why he lost his throne he said what is there somewhere we can't be waiting for you are you so special give me the knife and when Samuel came he said Saul what have you done he said you would have allowed me come God would have preserved your throne forever but now you have done foolishly today by this foolish act violating rankings in the spirit your throne is taken from you authority is real not everybody you see is a pure human being I don't know how to make you believe this but it's true For this cause, many are weak, many are sick. People's pride has stopped them from entering simple, cheap victories because of their refusal to understand authority. It's not human worship. There are some battles that are needless if you fight them. If you fight those, if you ever fight those battles, it's because you are not wise. Are we together? Yes. Truly speaking, there are some battles that are products of foolishness. Moses' hand began to go down. The Bible never said their sword stopped being sharp. Just because a man's hand was going down, they started defeating them. And they said, look, whatever we will do to support your position for the sake of our victory, we'll do it. I know what many people in our generation will do. Moses, you are not the only one God is talking to. Please help me with that rod, Jerry, and hold it and watch the rod kill you first. It looks simple until you see what is happening in the spirit. A man can say, God prosper. You say, What is there? Is it not just positive conversion? You too, God prospers you, and then you don't see any result. The law of authority all the blessings of god come through the scriptural chain of authority it is from aaron's head down to his beard then it goes down to his skirt praise the lord when authority is done properly it produces wonders when there is any violation of it whether on the part of the supposed spiritual father or on the part of those who submit to that grace there will always be problem proximity is not submission availability hanging around a grace is not genuine submission submission is not weakness please listen understand this it is not a proof of weakness only a foolish man of God will take advantage of people because of their submission to his grace are we together the law of authority learn it use it command cheap victories in your life it's not idolatry when it is done within the confines of scripture it is not idolatry number three we have a lot to do today the third price that we must pay to produce extraordinary results is the price of mental transformation 
the price of mental transformation numbers chapter 13 please help us media it's a long reading from verse 25 the price of mental transformation the sacrifice of upgrading your paradigm the laborious sacrifice through the agency of the word and every other material whose thoughts are consistent with the word take note first the word of god scripture and then every other material intellectual material whose thought line is consistent with the word of god qualifies to be an instrument of mental transformation there are many believers who study the bible but they do not study the works of people who love god and who have paid the price to access these laws listen let me tell you this the law of the mind is an irrefutable principle if you must command results no matter how spiritual you are your life will eventually be a reflection of your understanding your life your physical environment will inevitably be a reflection of your understanding may not happen immediately but over a given period of time it is safe to say your experience the sum total of your experiences spiritually financially intellectually sociologically is a reflection of both your paradigm and your understanding if you lack money forever it is because there is an understanding you do not have if you are fighting with everybody forever there is an understanding you do not have are we together there can be momentary failures and setbacks agreed but when over a long period of time your experiences are the same is proof that your mindset is delivering that result say amen numbers chapter 13 we are reading from verse 25 to 33 this was the encounter of moses and the 12 spies listen and they returned from searching the land after 40 days we are reading to 33 and they went and came to moses these are the people now and aaron and to the congregation of the children of israel unto the wilderness of paran to kadesh and brought back word to them listen and unto the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land and they told them and said we came unto the land whither thou sentest us and surely it flowed with milk and honey and this is an evidence this is the fruit of it nevertheless listen this is a mindset speaking now everyone's communication is a window into your understanding you can fake it for a while but with time you will speak your true convictions nevertheless this is a faulty mindset interrupting the word of god the people that dwelleth in the land and the cities are walled and are very great and moreover we saw the children of anak there the amalekites dwell in the land of the south the hittites and the jebusites and the amorites dwell in the mountains and the canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of jordan and caleb said kai keep quiet what is all this all you people are just bringing negative was i not there with you we saw it we just brought the fruits and caleb stilled the people before moses and said moses as far as i'm concerned this is doable let us go up at once and possess it why for we are well able someone prophesied to yourself i am well able say it again i am well able he said we are able to overcome in other words i'm not refusing it's a challenge he didn't say i'm able to go through it no you don't deny the real boy say we are able there is capacity within us to bring those giants down hallelujah this is the power of a transformed mind a man sits down and prophesies doom to himself because of his mindset i can't make it i am from kaduna state i am from plateau state i am from benway i am from kogi people from our family don't rise is a reflection of your understanding 31 but the men that were up with him said we be not able to go against the people why for they are they've not fought oh. they are, they fought in their minds and were defeated already the result of their defeat was that for we they are stronger than we and they brought up an evil report listen now what kind of report poor thinking will always make a man communicate what god calls an evil report 
of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land, though we have gone through, gone to search it, a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. The last verse. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. The Anakims never say, Hey, grasshopper. The people call themselves grasshoppers. The same way you call yourself um, a weak failure. The same way you call yourself all kinds of things. There is a price to pay to produce extraordinary results. Let me tell you, nobody is born with a transformed mind. Transformation is a spiritual investment. In case you see certain people confident and commanding results again and again, it is nobody is transformed by default, ladies and gentlemen. It is the labor dimension of the word that brings us to a point where we adjust our understanding. We've done many teachings aimed at building our mindsets and our understanding. I've taught us how paradigms are formed. The first way paradigms are formed uh, through our cultural backgrounds. We come from different cultures and then our environmental conditioning. We've lived among people who have been poor and broke. We have lived among people who have little or no respect for spiritual things. We have lived among people who do not value the power of the word of God. And unconsciously we have imbibed their way of life and their way of thinking as a paradigm, a set of belief, a plane of interpreting things. Your reality is interpreted by your perspective. And if you do not allow the word of God alter your perspective, you will fail in life in a way that you cannot imagine. Listen, I don't care what physical effort you are exerting. Your life will eventually be a reflection of your mindset. There are many people who have failed before they started. It was very clear from their mindset and their thinking that they were not going to make it. So they were not surprised when they failed. It was just a confirmation of a defeat that had been in their minds. Are we together? We were like grasshoppers. So they called themselves. The Bible tells us how to think. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, do what? Thinking and wishing are two different things. Wishing is just mesmerizing on a result that you, will never happen in your life. But thinking is constructing your mind, your understanding. Many people do not think well. They don't even think at all. And if they do, they think on negative things. Listen to me. Much more than your physical activity, focus on making sure that your mindset has been constructed to produce victory. Are we together? You were insulted growing up. You probably were abused growing up and it put something in your mind about men and you keep saying every man is a devil every man is no not every man is a devil in your world and based on your experience all the people you have encountered are bad but why don't you expand your horizon how about prosperity there are so many people when you tell them will you prosper they say when I read what <laughs> when I read what because a society has programmed your mind that your wealth is entirely dependent on just what you studied. So people make, they go out of their way to do malpractice because they hope that by so doing, it will give them an edge. Correct? What do you believe about yourself? What do you believe about God? What do you believe about life? You've heard me say it again and again. It never ceases to amaze me those who hang themselves or, co or commit suicide. I don't think I hate myself that much. Ah, I understand quarreling myself, but to hang yourself is, um, is, is quite, you must be assisted by a spirit. 
you become a reflection a physical reflection of your most dominant thoughts the thoughts that construct your understanding eventually become your life bring me someone who is as weak and beggarly and as villager as anything provided that person's heart is open to receive and learn give me six months with that person of thorough upgrading of his mind I'm not talking of business I'm not talking of whatever just allow me to change and alter that person's mind if I never see that person in my life again I can tell you staking my life that that person will be a success regardless of what his life is at that moment now here is the reverse accumulate a lot of physical things to hide the true state of your mind your understanding will take them away from your life until you look like what you believe are we together now let's do a little experiment look up don't feel bad how many of you have noticed that certain financial blessings only come at certain levels you never cross 30,000 mark if somebody blesses you with 200,000 it will finish and return back to that range it, your understanding pegged you like the thermostat of an iron you know how an iron is you program it to be this hot when it gets there what happens it breaks that's it there are people who will never cross hundred thousand give them one million they will laugh only for one week that money the, the behavioral patterns that come from faulty thinking will alter their behavior and make them act in a way a manner that reduces them back to the mindset of those who are hundred thousand allocators so it's not enough to just claim and say i'm a millionaire there is an understanding that resonates with that level of living and you must upgrade in your mind it's like resonance in physics remember those who are science-based there's something called resonance in physics that when you hit a tuning fork is that true at a particular frequency every other object within that environment that is the same frequency without touching it starts resonating that's how it is every result you have in the spirit has a spiritual frequency mental level that calls it when you want a result that is higher than your level of thinking it cannot resonate to it so your mindset must rise let me tell you when it gets there it will come in a heartbeat forget about the physical activities that act themselves to manifest it in your life that's that's little issue but we focus on who will bless me and how it will come that's that's not the issue just settle it in your mind you have programmed yourself truly to be successful when you want to know the true secret behind a man's result don't look at the physical result under study the understanding of that man you see that you get blessed from successful people not just by benefiting from the result of their success unfortunately that's what mediocres do they are obsessed by the result the tie the shoe the watch the car the um, anointing the miracles wheelchair no there is an understanding that helps that man to partner with the holy spirit so that that kind of result be produced when you have that construction then you are ready for victory the prize of mental transformation are you still living like your yesterday and expecting tomorrow's result it doesn't work that way sir you will never never be able to receive results at the mental state that brought the challenge that has pegged you let me tell you what challenges are challenges are a proof that your current level of understanding has reached its expiry level the moment you are confronted with a supposedly unsurmountable challenge is a proof to you i teach the school of ministry students that challenges are a letter from your future to you saying i am there and i am real but your mental state now cannot take you there challenges are a letter from your future to you saying i exist i am real but you will not arrive there with your current level of understanding i am passionate about god exposing my area of ignorance it doesn't embarrass me some of us are so egocentric that the moment you are aware that there is need for upgrade in an area it embarrasses us you must be flexible enough to admit that where i am is a reflection of something i do not know are we together do you believe this 
apostle i don't have friends everybody hates me it's a lie there is something about your understanding that keeps creating that reality apostle money comes and it disappears yes there can be demonic issues but the demons don't just come and act foolishly they act upon a mindset that can host them the day your mindset becomes hostile to their presence that's the day you break free that's why true deliverance after casting out the demons there must be a reconstruction of your understanding to make your environment no longer conducive for the activity of demon space it is almost vain to lay hands and cast out demons and leave the same mindset that brought them you are only recycling a journey of endless suffering that's why when demons find out that a particular man of god does not have intelligence enough to holistically secure people's deliverance the demons are in a hurry to leave they mock you before you raise your hand they go knowing that their access point is still there the door is open are we together something about your thinking is responsible for your limitation there is a way africa thinks we have subsistent thinking there is a way men of god think that don't give them results there is a way they think that they get results please every time you see a man of god a system a businessman whatever commanding results don't enjoy the flamboyancy of the physical results but if you really want to receive you must be able to labor to buy into their understanding so the bible says this let this mind permit this mind philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 permit this mindset this thinking this construction this set of understanding to be in you that was also in christ jesus and then things will respond to you the same way they responded to jesus born around a manger still didn't matter upgraded his mind 30 years he was to live 33 and a half years and he spent over 90 percent of his life committing to development and in three years he did something that through eternity will not recover from listen listen hear this advice never be in a rush to manifest physical results in your life don't be in a rush to start business someone met me one time and said sir what the way you are looking at me i don't know what i meant prophetically or physically he said what business do you think i can do i said none you will fail in every business you do no matter how simple it is and this is the reason it's not because you are lazy it is because you do not get the understanding of a prosperous person by default sincerity is one of the seed for greatness so you may be sincere it's like someone who is very sincere wants to transport you from one place to the other but cannot drive will his sincerity take you there as well-meaning as that person is it's not if you die it's when that car will capsize. don't labor to show physical results you try to buy a shoe of hundred thousand to make a statement i guarantee you your carelessness and your wrong thinking is going to spoil that shoe you'll be surprised that you never kick it on a wall but in one month the shoe will open up something about your wrong belief will mount pressure on that state your mind is saying it's a lie your physical realm is not agreeing with your mental realm something will happen i've given you an analogy again and again take a poor person Take someone who is one of the least workers in any business organization or any company put him in the director's office for two weeks don't tell him anything just put him there and say you have unlimited access to this office do you know what he will do number one he's going to steal are you seeing the mindset he will steal because he knows for sure that he's only there for a short time number two he will not clean and arrange the place what can i get so things the mediocre what can i get not what can i give he will sit down watch television drink all the juice in the fridge snap himself take selfies and then try to what can i steal oh there's one carton of water if i take five nobody will know that's a mediocre that's the reason why he will remain where he is in two weeks he will turn that office into his mindset but take a great man to a room that is messy cobwebs everywhere and he sits down his mindset refuses and say no this is not you whoever has your mindset should sweep the room and so he sweeps the room whoever has the mindset should clean the room 
in five days you come back and see the same room no cobwebs he would have bought a rug to put there as at the time he was deciding he didn't have money but his mindset told him how it will come is the last the most important thing is to plan there is power when you set goals this is a renewed mind a poor man who say i beg this nigeria i don't have any father anywhere and remain there after one year he has not been able to buy a rug something about our understanding is responsible for the way we are is that true i look at myself and i look at the dimensions god wants to take me and i look at many things i do not know that is responsible for my current level of result and so i continue to search find out if i know what follow runsha lakija knows then i will be a billionaire in dollars correct listen respect results don't trivialize results results are not luck especially predictable results predictable result time is a revealer of the accuracy of your convictions when you see a result that is sustained it was based on laws it wasn't based on magic i can dash you one million but you cannot become a millionaire for five years by mistake no sir it's a lie I can lay hands on you temporarily and you can even lay hands on someone in the wheelchair and leave the person. But brothers and sisters, you will not organize crusades for two years non-stop when intrinsically you have not received that grace. The Bible never said the donkey talked forever. He talked for a moment and his mouth was shut. The Bible never said the rod bordered forever. Psalm 78 verse 41. A scripture that has become a national anthem in this place it said but they limited the holy one they limited the holy one they were in the wilderness and they limited him can god make a way can god make a way can god make a way the bible says they limited him as mighty as god is brothers and sisters we can limit him through our understanding we can limit him someone met me one time and said apostle God doesn't want to encourage me to love. I said, what's the meaning of that? He said, I've told God I want to buy a Dick's Bible. I've told God I don't even want clothes for myself. Just spiritual items, messages, anointing oil, all these kind of things. And God, nobody is even help. And I said, show me the paper where you wrote them down. Show me the scripture you, at, you, you put on them. And he said, no, I don't have anything. I said, so if I were God, I would do the same thing. Show me the paper. Where have you gone to the market? To find out how much anointing oil is that's a proof of faith it's a sign that you know it will come faith is conviction and the action you take based on that conviction are we together yes let me tell you how to know people don't walk by faith they are vague in their expectations vagueness is a sign you are not sure the result will come the bible says give us he told you who to give number two he says this day then what our daily bread give us this day our daily bread specificity is very important in manifesting faith so that when the result comes you are sure that this is what i released my faith for is god speaking to us When you package your physical environment without the requisite mental upgrade and transformation, you have only flattered yourself. It's like throwing your money in a basket because everything will disappear. Please hear me, ladies and gentlemen, especially for we who are young. I know that we live in a society that mounts pressure on a gentleman and a lady to show. Uh -uh, you finished school four years ago till now. You can't even buy a nice jean. And so we go out of our way to try to paint our physical world to look like a reality that we have upgraded ourselves into. And we keep, you notice that you keep rising up and falling. Rising up and falling. Your physic, you try to fake it, your mindset brings you back. That's what happened to many of our loved ones. I've told people, why fake something that can be real? You don't have to fake it when it can be real brothers and sisters hear me you may be in a small one room right now 
no carpet no recharge card no nothing you are using a, a simple phone that you don't even know the name there's no name on it you just bought it somewhere don't allow that disturb you if you can take the word of god the beautiful thing about your mind is that it's not limited by time and space continue to upgrade yourself in the name of jesus i may have gary today but i will feed nations and you study the word of god and it's constructing your mind there is he that stirreth and yet increaseth. there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty ah so an attachment for things is why money doesn't come you write it in the name of jesus i have no attachment to things when god brings them money is a slave and a servant never to become a god and a master i am a giver and then you study again and god is able to make all grace abound towards you so that he having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work so it's god that can make all grace abound that means i don't need to worry about how the results will happen it is god's office that allocating how the physical results will manifest are we together you begin to study you see the bible says love never fails that means if there is anything that is failing in my life when i add love to it i can turn the results around So you construct your mindset let me tell you the first thing that will happen to you when your mind begins to transform your environment will start fighting you because immediately your friends and your environment your thinking will start making you act in a physical way that will make them say what are, are you the only one who is a christian what is all these things where we are talking about all of this in i beg man must walk and he said no sorry i don't speak like that again with all due respect something is happening to me say hey you better finish all that grammar and let's come and soak gary they are trying to pull you back say the devil is a liar say it again and they'll pull you back and say it's true let me go back jerry this koinonia thing you are just talking like fools even god knows why well, will i lie i'm like that I'm, I'm not and you start complaining and reprogram yourself back to your current state while people are watching football you buy a book 500 naira and you sit down when people are hilariously celebrating birthdays when they don't have any money god just opens a door 10,000 naira and you just say ah my birthday is tomorrow kai will i die like that let me enjoy myself are we together your birthday clothes 8,000 whatever else you buy you cook and the money has finished and you feel good about that day and continue suffering or someone can say this is my birthday i may not be a millionaire overnight but let me make it the last birthday when the, by this time one year i should at least be able to have options for the food i eat we don't make that decision we don't study what are you doing i'm browsing something what who is that um, somebody he I mean very powerful is a wonderful Christian and he's speaking minded of great people say I beg I want to watch one film it just came out am, am I mocking movies no please don't don't misunderstand me but I'm saying if you continue to flatter yourself and not commit yourself to personal development you will never be great I was talking with a dear friend today and I was telling them gone are the days where people think ministers are daft people they are just people who manipulate the minds of people ministers are very intelligent people it takes a lot of intelligence alongside spirituality to be able to communicate thoughts I was coming with one of the protocol persons and when we we're coming I was asking him what he's doing now and he said he wanted to go into public speaking and I said wow I said really everybody's a public speaker the moment you are a leader in any field you are a public speaker public speaking is all about communicating thoughts it takes intelligence it takes psychology it takes leadership it takes content not just that god sent you and say go to america go to um whatever and then you go and stand and say well the most important thing is the miracle that will happen right now don't worry what if you like be sleeping while i'm talking you will soon suspect you and say you are a herbalist because the foundation upon which the power comes you see our incompetence raises the propensity for suspicion 
especially where you know that there is the lavish anointing of God upon your life you must have both a sound word and intellectual balance so that as you are communicating the word of God there is a, a synergy with your result anybody that listens knows that no 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 this person has paid his price I will be silly believing that he should not be at this level of results say in the name of Jesus I receive grace to pay the price of mental transformation I buy the truth and I sell it not hallelujah one way we transit mentally is to find out those who are current reflections of our aspirations and then to buy into their thinking and their paradigms here's how the Bible puts it it says follow them so not everybody is worthy of being followed it says honor all men but you can't follow all men listen there is this African trado African mentality of loyalty to people ideas and systems that are obsolete and do not have capacity to make you great listen the Bible says and David served his generation every generation has a curriculum of understanding you must understand the generation with which you are sent to minister to and be able to construct your mind to understand their needs and how best to communicate it I'm sent to minister to all men but I always tell people that the age range of my influence and my impact is 15 to 50 if you are within the range age range of 15 to 50 you are within my generation of influence now that does not mean people like our daddy and our elderly ones here I will bless you but you will be surprised that Bishop Oyedeko and Papa Adeboye will be more useful to them than a young man like me is that true because they grew with that generation if you're in ministry here and people tell you are ministering to young people you better rejoice and don't think it's an embarrassment because that means you'll be ministry for a long time if you're in ministry and every of your member is at least 60 65 I have a very sad news for you you are not going to last because um, those people are at the level of their life where they are interested in legacy don't tell them speak well no not at that age my brother they are writing books and mentoring another generation we laugh at those in children's ministry and say ah you as big as you are those children in 20 years will become leaders now in the world we have young people I foresee times when in the next 10 15 years you will have presidents in their 20s young people whose minds are malleable and flexible the world has grown enough to discern results more than biological age when you have results they allow you look at France has already set the pace now with their prime minister other nations will follow through a time will come when if you are not competent early you will join a queue that will never reach your turn forever I want you to believe what I'm saying it is true it is good that a man bears his yoke in his youth pay the price now pay the price now you may be laughed at now but pay the price are we blessed change your perception change your paradigm don't focus on just starting business as wonderful as that is or getting a job as wonderful as that is pay the price pay the price to build your mind then your job I have said it again and again I'm not necessarily talking about money but you don't make money off business you make money off your understanding you don't become great off the physical things you do you become great off your understanding may the Lord cause us to be men and women of great understanding in the name of Jesus you've heard me say it again and again that we will all be great but the greater part of the news is that we will all know ourselves you will see it happen yes you will see it happen we may not look like it now the Bible says now are we the sons of God it says and it doth not yet appear until you see the quality of children that our generation will produce filled with the Holy Ghost from age two why because a healthy mindset is the head of that family loving God because you understand the principles that at age 60 you look 30 
because both the joy and the peace and the prosperity of the Lord together have constructed and extended your life in quietness and peace that you will be called Beulah and Hephzibah unperturbed by the vicissitudes of life and people ask you how are you doing it you say I can reproduce it again and again it was not luck pray in one minute and say Lord help me grant me grace to be passionate about transforming my understanding stop complaining about the physical results you do not see brothers and sisters that should be the least of your concern Lord deliver me from a fake life are we praying deliver me from a life that tries to show I am there when I am not there I receive the patience I receive the patience I know that I'm not going to become a millionaire overnight I will not become anointed overnight I receive the patience to carefully build my understanding lift your voice and pray there is an understanding that will make me an exceptional man of God there is an understanding that will make me an exceptional wife exceptional husband exceptional career person exceptional businessman an exceptional politician I focus on mental transformation I pay attention to look for men and women who are a reflection of my desire your future is somebody's experience today and the Bible instructs that we are transformed by the Word of God but again by following them who through faith and understanding allowing our minds to rise above our cultural limitations everything they have told you growing up you will never be great you are poor you are small you are in an entity you probably have failed again and again in life to a point where you do not believe that there is such a possibility for favor something has told you you will never be a good wife you will never be a good husband it could be friends backgrounds i'd like you to pray and say i cast down every imagination and every thought that exalts itself above the knowledge of christ i bring every thought to the obedience of christ i decree and declare that i am well able ten times better my life has no limitations my only limitation is the voice of the spirit in the name of jesus i am limitless hallelujah listen don't listen to what i'm saying and think i'm just talking nonsense if you don't believe what i'm telling you you fail in life yes you will and you will live an angry and resentful life our society is full of very angry people do you know one of the reasons why people are angry is not because of their challenges it's because of their understanding and their interpretation of it the bible says to rejoice in the lord rejoice in what if you rejoice in your certificate one day it will make you angry the day you are not promoted if you rejoice just in your husband alone your wife alone your child your car your business all those things they fluctuate but it says rejoice in a constant factor called the Lord and again I say rejoice and your joy will never have a reason to bend when when you see people happy and making merriment and rejoicing sometimes they say, ah, these people are lucky if you know what those people are going through half it may kill you but they have made up their minds that their joy is not defined by the things around them they understand that joy is a fetcher in the realm of the spirit you use it to draw from the wells of salvation it's not circumstances that make, the bible says the joy of the lord is your strength meaning when i lose joy i lose strength and satan understands this so he will orchestrate it i thought you said you will enter a relationship by january you even open your mouth and told people now it's november oh, my sister and you just say hi how about god there are many men in koinonia now when they see me you are already responding to it but the joy of the lord oh lord i give you praise i thank you where is the god that brought the servant of isaac to come and meet rebecca that same god will connect me lord i give you praise before the arrival of the man i continue working on myself to become a woman of virtue that the day that gentleman sees me he will never be able to sleep again good preparation what do you do while waiting for your miracle among many things praise and prepare mm. praise and prepare is god blessing us yes you will never and i say it with all humility you never see me putting my hand on my chin and say hi life 
He said, why now? He said, Nigeria, you not see what is happening. I choose to be joyful. I choose to make merry. In my world, there is absolute peace. The world you talk about is the one your mindset created. Oh. In my world, there is peace and love and joy. Apostle, you see what is going on in this country. I know, but I know that there is a God in heaven. He was not dethroned. He's alive. Hallelujah, he's alive. Apostle, are you hearing that terrorists are entering churches and bombing everywhere? Oh, I understand that as the mountains surround Jerusalem, there is a construction. I am happy. Joy is a defense. You plant fear and plant hatred and before you know it, what you used to believe, you now stop it and throw it away. No. Be joyful. Prophesy to your neighbor. Say, be joyful. Say to another, remain joyful. Amen. Yes. When two people are fighting, the first thing that disappears is laughter. So when you cannot laugh and you are happy before God, something is wrong. Oh God, I'm here again. Abba, you say, better come and answer me. What is all this thing I'm saying? Is it that you are not seeing my own prayer request? Or is it that Apostle Son is not touching my own? What is all this? I keep writing this thing. And when you, the devil says, please continue. I, I beg you, continue. You frustrate Satan when you look at your challenges and rejoice before them. He says, what then do I do? It's a sign you are not living in the flesh. Are we together? You get up in the morning and there's no food. And you can have a sarcastic roommate or neighbor who says, Pastor, Gary has finished though. They say it with sarcasm. Are, are you, do you have people like that around your life? Yes. They will say to me, please, prosperity confessor, Gary has finished. There is soup, but no Gary. I tell God there is already soup. Just help us with Gary. They try to mock you. But do you know mockery is a mystery? Every time, listen, every time men are mocking you, it's a sign something has left heaven. And Satan is trying to use men to stop it. Read your Bible. Every time they mocked men, when the mockery was at the apex, the result was almost arriving. When we started out in ministry, many people mocked and said nonsense and said all kinds of things. And the Lord told me, just continue to rejoice and celebrate. And hallelujah, look what he's done. And will continue to do by his grace. Make up your mind that you are going to be a happy person. Make up your mind from today's teaching that you will be joyful. Apostle, nine o'clock my rent must be paid. My brother, anger will not pay rent. Your, your annoyance will not even add to it. So you better be happy because even physically, it can make some, what is making you joyful like this? And you say, I'm smiling in the midst of the storm. I say, storm, what storm? And the person comes in. Tell your loved ones to be happy. Our generation of young people are becoming unnecessarily old because of stress. You see somebody 20 years old, they tell you he has BP. Sir, what are you thinking about? I say, my life. I'm 20, I'm not in a relationship. Like, ah, are you joking? What in the world is this? What's, what's wrong with you? Listen to our character building series. Walk on your mind. What did you watch? Which movies have you been watching that have raped away your patience? But when you see somebody rejoicing, always happy. You come back from Koinonia, I'm happy. Somebody is grumbling in the car. You just say, well, God bless you. You arrive home, you are happy. What will we eat? Well, there may not be food. And truly, sometimes it can be painful. But Lord, I give you all the praise. How long will I keep dancing? For as long as the answer comes. Let me tell you, waiting for miracles is like getting pregnant. I would never have the privilege of having that experience. But one thing I know is that I've been in the hospital many times to see the joy of giving birth to a child. For as soon as you travel, travel in joy, Brothers and sisters, the God who promised you will bring it to pass. Oh, yes. I have seen men celebrate the victory of trusting God. I will hold on. If I perish, I perish. If God said it, I believe him. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. God.
God is speaking to you. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Listen, brothers and sisters, hear me encourage you tonight. Be patient with God. Be patient. Be patient with God. It didn't take you one day to build that understanding. Just continue with God. Apostle, it's been three years I've been coming for Koinonia. I can't even pay my transport. Don't worry. The word of God is working. The day the miracle will come, not even your prayer will stop it. God says it's too late. When your mindset has built it, no. A day will come. In one month, you will see cars in Koinonia. You'll be like, oh, it's a season. It's not a season. The, if the car is being given to you now your colleagues are saying my brother won't you buy a car don't worry don't go and kill yourself trying to get loan anywhere just calm down leave the issue of loan and stay with God take your Okada with honor and give God praise the day to come it will come in a grand style I assure you You have only two shirts. I've noticed this is the only thing you wear. Well, I'm not ashamed of it. At least I'm not a thief. I will iron the shirt. It's faded. But I thank God you are seeing it now. I was looking at some of my photos today. So I'm not even very... I looked at some of them and I said, Ah! God, you are faithful. What are we saying? You are so faithful. Listen. Let me give many of you a message of hope. At your level, I was worse than how you look now. So you better encourage yourself and say, if I'm at this level and I'm already smiling like this, it means when I get to a level higher than where I am, is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Number four. What's the third price? Is the price of being skillful write it down the price of being valuable the price of being skillful Proverbs chapter 18 verse 16 it's become an anthem in koinonia the gift of a man and I add the gift of a man that's been identified developed and added to with excellence take note not just the gift of a man the raw material potential gift no sir it won't bring you before great men the gift of a man an ability a potential identified developed are we together now and then alongside excellence when you serve your gift with excellence the bible says it will make room hallelujah and will bring you before great men nobody celebrates potential we recognize potential but we celebrate potential that has been developed the world we live in rewards value you must be able to rise to a point where you provide value that is needed and useful not value that you know your value must be needed and useful the kingdom of god is built upon a reward system listen carefully the kingdom of god is built upon a reward system money being only one of the rewards is is a reward for being valuable are we together now very important proverbs chapter 13 verse 15 it says good understanding procures favor good understanding gives favor good understanding is like a pregnant woman when she gives birth the name of her child is favor it says but the way of the transgressor a transgressor is not a sinner the way of a transgressor is hard hardship has a formula you can predict it good understanding giveth favor but the way of transgressors is what you must be skillful nobody stays close to me and refuses to be skillful you must be skillful we train the leaders in this ministry to be skillful the workers everybody you must be skillful oh i can sing wonderful but will Don Muen call you because of your voice? Have you worked upon yourself? What do you know about singing? The truth is that many of us, at least to an appreciable level, we have discovered areas here and there in our lives. But the challenge for many of us is the mental and physical inertia, that laziness to develop ourselves to a point where we get to a point of unconscious competence. 
Everybody shout it after me. Say competence. Say it again, competence. Let me tell you something I've learned about competence. Competence defies age, gender, tribal, and racial um, differences and, and all of and sentiments. I have seen people rewarded regardless of where they came from. I've seen people rewarded and blessed different fields. Listen, anything you are doing, if you do not plan to be a leader in that field, don't do it. Are we together? I will never commit my energy to anything that I will not be a leader in, whether it is ministry, whether it is business. You may start small, but your the those who are rewarded in any field are the leaders of the field. In the academia the professor collects the highest salary why because he has been able to upgrade his mind and access value to that point where he deserves it you may be a student or a lecturer or a staff or a worker but if you have not risen to that level of competence you may never have the privilege of access make up your mind that I will be competent. Say it, I will be competent. Say it again, I must be competent. The law of value. Your value, when developed, decide who pursues you. Your value, when developed, decides who pursues you. Mike Mudok teaches that your a problem is an invitation for a reward. A problem is an invitation for a reward. Until there is a problem that you can solve, I teach our school of ministry students that you are unnecessary. Herein lies the mystery of people ignoring you. When you are not valuable, you will not be a friend to anybody. Write this down. Discover and develop problem-solving skills. Discover and develop problem-solving skills. Be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored. Be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored be a master brothers and sisters what we do that you call ministry is solving problems you know i've said it again and again many people get angry when men of god are blessed because many people carry they propose that understanding that men of God are lazy people who just receive free money from people. They believe that men of God eat the church tithe and offerings and they buy cars and buy houses. It may be true for some, but it's not so for most. Men of God become blessed because they are offering value. That the value is spiritual in context. Now I am teaching you, is that true? I'm reshaping your mind. I'm adding value to you. The system of the kingdom is every time you dispense value, whether you sell it or give it free, you are authorized to be rewarded. Are we together now? You only have a problem with a man who you see blessings in his life, whether financial and otherwise, and you cannot see the value equivalent. So when I look at a billionaire like Bill Gates, I see the value equivalent. That's why we don't harass him. If I look at a criminal who is not offering any value, yet his bank account is fat, then I know that the equation does not balance. Before you ever criticize a blessed man, examine the value. Now, you may not have risen to a level of perception where you think what he's doing is valuable enough to bring reward, but it still does not matter. Everybody say, I will be valuable. Say it again, I will be valuable. I will be skillful. Become a master at something, koinonia. And wave poverty goodbye become a master at something if I ask you what are you a master at and you cannot tell me in one word at best you will wallow around the realm of mediocrity and never rise up to be something the concept of being multi-talented is good but those who are masters in life 
are known for something there must be a skill that sets you out then other skills are auxiliary supporting skills that lift you are we together now i'm not only a man of god and many other things but most people know me as a man of god and they may think that's all i am and that's all that i do there are many other aspects to my life but there is always a skill that opens the door that skill that brings you to the table of greatness then you leverage upon that and other gifts and talents are now supporting is that true yes you must be valuable now the oil in nigeria and africa is having a lot of problem fluctuations here and there and you can see that the whole nation is moving down that's a sign that we were never offering real value are we together if we we're offering real value the depleting of the oil prices should not affect our gdp necessarily because there should be skilled labor there should be captains of industry and people who are skilled because we are largely depending on oil there is very little reward this uh, our society pays very very little reward on meritocracy the people the those who deserve things are not rewarded but in certain parts of the world when you are competent even if they hate you that reward for sure will come to you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you may you be valuable being valuable will drive shame out of your life I tell you this being valuable the Bible says study to show yourself approved it says a workman that needed not to be ashamed there is a relationship between ignorance and shame are we together there is a relationship there is a correlation between ignorance and shame those who are angry, insulting every blessed person, insulting those who are making things happen in society are those who have not paid the price to identify their giftings, their ability, their skill, their talent, and to invest time, resources, and humility to build themselves to a point where they become leaders of their field. I've made up my mind that in everything I'm involved in, I will be flawlessly competent. It's a commitment I've made to myself. And I pray that you make that commitment tonight. Never settle. The enemy of your next level is the success of your last level. Be careful. Failure does not make people fail. It stimulates them to go high. But the moment you begin to achieve results, there is a chance that you will be complacent. I will be valuable. Become a master solution provider. There is no mystery about wealth. It's not a miracle. It's not magic. It's a system, a reward system of the kingdom. Remember that I said your value on its own cannot bless you. It must be developed. Everybody say developed. There is a season of refining your value. One gentleman sent me a text in the course of the week and said apostle i'm starting ministry i don't know exactly what to do but i believe that as i start i think i hope i'm getting what he said correctly i'm starting and i know that god will bless me just speak a word i said no sir it's not a word that moves ministry a word is over you then principles guide you as you walk obviously that gentleman will not last one month he will be angry at the neighboring churches and be angry at members who come and go and not know why they are going you hear people complain why will you come to my church and receive miracles and go away and they think the solution is just prayer man of god change my story yes god can change your story but the men of god or the men that come to your church are human beings they respond to value by the time you continue to give people information that are needed and useful and they watch their lives transform the bible says he makes me lie down in green pastures you cannot make them lie down but you can make the pastures green then they will come and lie down they never visit green pastures when it is truly green they lie down information that is spiritual information that is transforming information that is needed and useful well researched and intelligently communicated backed up by the anointing of the spirit that's the kind of information that stays in today's world and in today's church any other information outside this let me tell something with members members are very funny they can say ah 
you know you say something that is complete rubbish and somebody stands up and says my god and while they are doing that you are so impressed with yourself and next sunday he never comes again members for you are we learning how was my preaching today ah, i mean i can't even start i mean it was it was it was strange and instead of the man of God to be honest enough to admit that guy and try and go back and trust God to help, he said, You mean it? I mean, that's that's he says, sir. This message is a, is a bestseller, and then the man, the person does not come. The moment somebody opens a church near you in a heartbeat, they will leave you because they were never loyal to you, they are loyal to themselves and their commitment to their transformation. And if you lose relevance and you cannot be a strategic contributor to their growth, spiritually and otherwise, then there's no reason why they listen to you. I've committed myself that nobody listens to me and just says this person, well, well just a daft. No, 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 no. It takes a lot of study. It takes a lot of labor, research, commitment. I'm committed to doing it. This is the key to remaining relevant. Are we together? You must be skillful. Write this scripture down. We're not turning for time's sake. Genesis 41. Um, okay, let's just look at two verses. Genesis 41. The whole scripture is from verse 14 to 46. That's the whole context from verse 14 to 46. But please give us 14 and 31. This was Joseph now. The Bible says, Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. Are we together? Now he began to interpret Pharaoh's dream and then to proffer a solution. And in verse 33. Now therefore let Pharaoh look out for a man. Look at a politician. After he finishes marketing himself. He said, Pharaoh, it's not like I'm saying I want to be the one. But you, since you are smart, who has committed himself to being that valuable? Look for a man who is discreet and wise. And when you find such a man mm, when you find such a man do what he sees he programmed his own promotion when you find that man this is the level of result that should be given to that man set him over the land of Egypt and Pharaoh said unto Joseph for as much as God has shown you this there is none so discreet and wise. Everybody say mastery. It's leadership. This is called leadership. Pace setting. Trailblazing. That no, this is not competition. This is the reward that comes when you labor and stand out. Competition is in the realm of mediocres. You never see planes clashing in the air because there's enough space. It's cars that move around and have traffic for a very long time. You seldom see traffic in the air. There is space for champions. Hallelujah. Say I'm one of them. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, For as much as God has showed you this, there is none so discreet and wise. Let's continue reading. Um, Thou shalt immediately be over my house, and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. Go ahead. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have, I have said thee this day over all the land of Egypt. Did he ask him what tribe? Did he ask him, are you a Jew or you are this? Uh -uh. You have solved my problem, you have reward. And Pharaoh took off his ring, the ring in his hand, and put it upon Joseph's hand. And arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. Go ahead. He made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee. And he made him ruler over the land of Egypt. Let's see something interesting that happened now. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee, shall no man authority through competence shall no man lift his hand or foot in the land of egypt let's finish it two more verses and pharaoh called joseph's name but whatever that is that's a very long name there and he gave him to wife asena free wife getting a wife becomes easy when you are valuable this is the revelation god is giving us yes you can clap getting a wife becomes almost effortless when you are valuable god programmed that way not everybody will produce the same result but there must be a token a token a sign that you are going somewhere 
and joseph went over the land of egypt the last verse how old was he and joseph was what this is somebody's lifetime achievement he did it at age 30. if you got born again at 30 you are behind time i teach on the graph of life you can get my message that's a sign that you need to catch up and when he stood before pharaoh king of egypt and he stood before pharaoh king of egypt and joseph went out from the presence of pharaoh and went throughout the land of egypt your competence can give god space to lift you your competence can give god space to lift you make up your mind to be valuable pray in one minute before we talk about the last point and then we'll pray father in the name of jesus i receive grace to be skillful lift your voice and pray plant in me a resentment for mediocrity plant in me a resentment for average being a local champion being satisfied by little results being celebrated by mediocres competing myself with people who are not even doing anything i receive grace are you praying in the name of jesus i declare i decree and i declare go ahead and pray lord i will rise in business i set myself to become a leader in that field in the mighty name of jesus in my career i will rise to a managerial level i will not stop till i reach the apex i will not celebrate the mediocrity that has come with my background if you're a northern and pray hard pray twice in the name of jesus the mediocrity that comes with my territory i i declare that i break through it if i need to take certifications i set myself to personal development if i need to upgrade myself in knowledge i receive grace if i need seminars and training i receive grace if i need to submit myself consciously for mentorship i receive grace grace to follow those who through faith and patience i will not waste my day again i will turn my laptop to a university i will turn my android device to a university i take advantage of the information on the internet in ministry in business i find out the leaders in my field and i press to know what they know hallelujah let me tell you how to know you are becoming a leader when somebody is following you if there is nobody following you to learn from you you are not a leader you claim you are a businessman show me those who you have raised because wisdom is justified by her children most people who follow you are people you have mentored unconsciously you were minding your business producing results and your result became too obvious to be ignored the book of Mark says, all men seek for thee. Please, if you truly are part of this ministry, resent mediocrity. Are we together? Resent mediocrity. Doesn't matter whether you graduated with a pass up, graduated with whatever. You can re-engineer yourself. Re-educate yourself. Then you will change your finances. Then you will change that talk that 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 statements they always make they will continue to jay at you and say saul killed one thousand david killed ten thousand competition will never leave the habitation of mediocres there is a realm you must rise to repeated mistakes are a sign that you are in ignorance before you take out any physical step again go for knowledge number four pray in the spirit for one minute. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Your word is changing me. I receive grace. Hallelujah. The fourth price, and we'll be done for today. Please, I want to have everybody's attention because what i'm about to teach you is a very big secret most of you may think you know it but i want you to listen to me with your spirit listen with your heart the price of building quality relationships is the fourth price you must pay if you want to establish extraordinary results in your life the price of building quality relationships relationships are advantageous connections connections 
relationships are advantageous connections the easiest way to be wealthy and to be blessed in life is through relationships I've taught you this I'm repeating it so that you will understand the easiest way to be blessed in life brothers and sisters is through relationship relationships are powerful relationships are irrefutable there is no champion without quality relationships relationships are currencies they can buy anything money can buy anything money can buy relationships can buy it the only reason why money is useful is because there is a human being at the other end to collect it that human being can choose to say my relationship has paid for it i've said it again if you use money to pay for everything in life you are not working in wisdom now money is only one of many currencies relationship being the highest at the cadre second only to godliness and your spiritual connection let me tell you something of all the currencies that men used to purchase results in life physical money notes currencies is the least of them there are seven currencies i hope that by god's grace i'll teach it next year seven currencies we use to purchase results in life everything in life is bought it's just that money is not the only currency relationship is a priceless currency higher than gold higher than the dollar lend this god called abraham alone and lot who was related went with him that was the only thing lot did and he became stupendously wealthy relationships can determine the next course of your results and lack of it can keep you stagnated almost for a lifetime please i want you to learn this the presence of a quality relationship in your life can define the next level of your success lack of it can stagnate you sometimes even for a lifetime you are one quality relationship underline quality you are one quality relationship away from your next level of results believe me on this you are one quality relationship away from the next level of your results you know all of this already my emphasis is not just to talk about the relationships but to be able to guide us on principles i've noticed believers know very little about relationships this is why many of us have been grounded although skilled a few scriptures four of them one amos chapter 3 verse 3 please write it down the bible says can two walk together except they be agreed modern day interpretation two cannot walk together unless they be compatible there must be similarity in their paradigms and understanding Two people cannot become friends when there is a large difference in their perspectives. There must be similarity. You must believe similar things about God, about life, about money, about family. It qualifies you to be friends. Second scripture. Very, very touching scripture. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24. Proverbs chapter 18 and 24. It tells us that he who desires friends... You must sow that seed. Proverbs 18 and verse 24 lets us know that relationship is a harvest. Meaning that until you sow that seed, there is no harvest of relationship. It says a man that hath friends must first show himself what? Friendly. And trying to show yourself friendly will require you for bearing and even sticking closer than a brother most of us want the harvest of friendship and relationships and we never sow the seeds you don't go to a farm at around this time waiting to harvest when you did not plant relationships are harvests we must sow the seeds proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 read with me one to read he that walketh with the wise shall do what but a friend of foolish friends what will he get 
it didn't say foolish people don't have a future that's not what the bible is saying the bible says you are a product of your environment he that walks with the wise shall himself be wise but a companion of fools shall be destroyed please write this down everyone relationships do not maintain themselves relationships do not maintain themselves it takes commitment on the part of all the parties involved to maintain relationships relationships do not maintain themselves this is a fallacy that many of us must be delivered from relationships do not maintain themselves it takes commitment on the part of all not some all the parties involved to maintain relationships please listen to this and you will be surprised that you will multiply your success relationships do not maintain themselves apostle people don't like me show me the seeds you are sowing the seeds of friendship are we together now apostle nobody wants to walk this koinonia people serve they say greet one another they don't even greet me no sir how to maintain relationships this is the crux of the teaching how to maintain relationships i want to give you seven keys every one of us make sure you learn these keys if you truly learn these keys i give you a guarantee those outside is dark but make sure you're writing those online connecting everywhere i want to show you the reason why your favor might be delayed number one the first key to maintaining relationships is avoid competitive jealousy write it down key number one you cannot sustain quality relationships until you are ready to avoid like a cancer competitive jealousy we're going to read all the scriptures every scripture i'm giving we're going to read so media please help us on that wise i'll give you a number of scriptures proverbs 14 verse 30 quickly please then we'll look at 27 verse 4 proverbs 14 and verse 30 the bible says a sound heart is the life of the flesh are we together read the b part it says but envy or jealousy is what rottenness it has a a disease effect to your bones let me tell you something competitive jealousy destroys you jealousy is like a wound competitive jealousy destroys you believers are very very competitive people jealous people you bought this car i buy it too you bought this suit i buy it too if, if you know i'm not just saying it for koinonia alone but this is something i've observed this is one of the reasons why many believers worldwide especially in the african continent we are obsessed with the passion to prove points and so we do not have the patience to allow time and preparation to come to fruition men of god compete with themselves and all kinds of things there there are healthy dimensions of competition when you're speaking from a business perspective and you can challenge yourself and spoil yourself to excellence but the church has a plague competitive jealousy members koinonia is quiet thank you jesus because that that means that the holy spirit is pounding on this is exactly how result i love you too much and i must teach you this proverbs 27 verse 4 many of us fall sick being envious of people listen very very powerful description look up please it says wrath is cruel that means it's not good don't do it anger is outrageous but compared you know in comparison who is able to stand before envy in other words envy is worse than anger wrath is cruel anger is outrageous but who is able to stand before envy envious people never get results in their lives they live their lives in bitterness and pain could this be why many of us do not maintain valuable relationships last scripture proverbs 14 verse 30 okay we already have that we read it already 
Proverbs 27 verse 4. We'll just leave those two. Avoid competitive jealousy. Say in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to be patient until the word of God manifests in my life. I reject jealousy. I cast away jealousy from my life. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. It will sting your ego, but brothers and sisters, this is God speaking. Pray. The spirit of competitive jealousy. I take it away from my life. Please pray. Envious of my workers at work. Envious of my business contemporaries. No. Envy is sin. It's not just bad. It is sin. Sin against yourself. You depress yourself. There are many people that don't sleep in the night. This lady was my junior in school. She's now married and I'm not married. You are envious. This person, I was the person that, that trained this person. He's now a millionaire. I'm no longer, I'm a pastor. This is my son. It's all those jealousy and envy. Kill it now. Lift your voice and pray. Shabakato Sekata. In the name of Jesus, I come against it. Satan, you will not destroy my propensity to quality relationships. Competitive jealousy. God bless you. Number two, very quickly. What is the second key to maintaining relationships? I was surprised when I was studying this. I found out that a, a research was done. And it was, it was told that one of the top three reasons why relationships do not last is because of evil speaking, backbiting, and gossip. So the second point is avoid gossip, backbiting, and evil speaking. The Bible calls it ill speaking. Statistically, you can go and check it. The top reasons why relationships break. Give us Titus chapter 3 verse 2 please. And then Proverbs chapter 6 will read from verse 16 to 19. Avoid gossip, backbiting, speaking evil. Unfortunately, and with all due respect to the body of Christ. For some reason, the church in Nigeria, I don't know if it's because of our African background. We are experts at gossip. Experts at backbiting. Experts at speaking evil. To speak evil of no man. Are we there? To be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. To speak evil of no man. It is amazing how there is an appetite in people to talk ill and evil of people. There are believers that come to church only to come and find out what is wrong. Are we together? You speak evil of people. We speak evil of our parents. We speak evil of leaders, pastors business people we speak evil of our government we speak evil of anybody if it is not you every other person has a problem you will never maintain good relationships like that and you will lose out on opportunities for cheap victory is God speaking to us avoid gossip gossip is a great sign of weakness gossip is a sign of mediocrity it's a sign of lack of confidence in yourself it's a spirit i'm sorry to say it and please don't be offended most of us the homes where we grew up from that's the norm that's where we got this mindset everybody talks about everybody gossip backbiting speaking evil proverbs chapter 6 from verse 16 to 19 proverbs chapter 6 just write it and look up, I'll read it. These six things does the Lord hate. So God hates it. These six things does the Lord hate. Seven are an abomination unto him. We're reading to 19. Number one, a proud look. Number two, a lying tongue. Number three, hands that shed innocent blood. Number four, a heart that devised wicked imagination. There is such a heart. Feet that be swift in running into mischief. 19. A false witness. 
that speaketh lies and the last of them is what he that soweth discord it didn't say among men among who you find them in every church and every ministry experts are joining the heads of nice people together hey jimmy i i wouldn't have told you but I've, I've, do you know have you noticed that every time koinonia comes there's a way pastor alpha looks at you <laughs> i will just you about it later it's devilish it's devilish it's devilish you are sowing seeds of discord there are many people who were happy friends until a wrong information came in between them there are husbands and wives that live in hatred because a third party was introduced adam and eve were living in harmony until there is a third voice you must be careful third voices ruin quality relationships how many of you god wanted to lift you until somebody came in with a report and say sorry you how many ladies would have been married now but someone who sows seeds of discord sorry i i overheard somewhere that you like this lady are you are you blind i just came to advise you are you blind this lady that has lived like this, she was my neighbor growing up. So it's, it's something I know. Is that how you hate your destiny? And the brother goes back. Be careful because when we pray during miracle services, we pray very wild prayers and tell God to do those any and everything standing on the way of people's progress. And you must be careful that that's not you. Because the prayer will be answered anyway. Are we together? He that soweth discord. Do you know that gossip can be habitual? Meaning even if there is nothing to say, because you have trained your mind, you will always, you just see somebody pass and say, ah, let me tell you something. I didn't plan to talk, but no. Don't laugh. Almost everybody is guilty of this. So when it's time to pray, who will cry before God first for yourself and say Lord I'm guilty I am very very guilty are we together yes worship team standing to worship I you see how this guy is standing that, that's the guy I'm telling you hey you don't know that guy I saw him around that area yesterday he likes it lady he likes it what is your business for heaven's sake what is your business are we together yeah what is your business gossip backbiting ill-spoken words you just hear that somebody is rising you say who who is rising no i need to do something about it don't become like that ill-spoken words the appetite you see every time you talk bad about people i want you to remember that you are destroying god's creation you must stop it if put yourself in the shoe of the ones you are destroying when you tear down people and destroy them how many people tear down men of god you don't think about their churches what happens to their members while you are destroying them what happens when you are talking ill of a pastor what happens when you are tearing him down what happens when you are insulting the pastor's wife think of what happens to her reputation it affects her leadership where experts are doing it it's a habit that I trust that God will break from us because many of us this is what drives friends from us come pastor Alpha God brings your destiny helper he holds your hand in two weeks in two weeks everybody knows everything about you ah I came to apostles house I saw him counting dollars <laughs> Don't, don't mind that quietness oh apostle is rich you think it's an information you are giving and God is saying you see this person you are not a candidate for my help carry your trouble and go away and say ah but god is going to help me no we have destroyed our lives destroyed opportunities how many people would have gotten jobs if they knew how to keep quiet do you know some people so gossip that they gossip even about themselves they have it's an obsession if there is nothing to talk about you can even be the person to act the drama yourself I beat my wife. I just want you to know honestly. And you see, listen, the thing about gossip and ill speaking, please listen, this is a lesson for all of us to learn. The thing about gossip is, it is like lost. Whoever is the object there, 
is the one you will tell the information to including a child imagine me now coming to talk assuming pastor alpha has a child that is grown but because there is an appetite you are walking in a house and you are now talking kite boy this is your father now you are poisoning the mind of the child what do you think happens now are we together we must repent from the spirit of backbiting and gossip romans chapter 16 verse 17 please give it to us quickly gossip terrible backbiting terrible now i beseech you brethren mark them which cause division and offense is contrary to the doctrine that we have learned do what to them what is the scriptural remedy avoid them avoid them listen hold on let me teach you something be careful when you partner with gossip because very soon the person gossiping will need favor from the one he's talking about and you will be the scapegoat to use and secure that favor a typical example is workers people who work in their profession your boss your superior they come and meet you and say this is our boss said so 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 and so and they gossip when promotion comes what do you think happens you say uh, boss i i just came to appreciate you and to confess something sir let me be honest i've been talking about you you see he has bailed himself abby but sir this is even the milder part of the story the worst one is i'm about to tell you someone else who joined me because he's looking for promotion and all of a sudden a boss that says see me by three o'clock you come back and say pack up your bags because next week you are leaving this company why sir please leave my office seed of discord gossip is cancerous backbiting 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 you must avoid it like a cancer number three the third way to maintain relationships avoid offense avoid offense what is offense the ease with which you get irritated angry and resentful is called offense offense is a measure of the ease your ease of volatility there are people who get offended you can just look at them and it's like this your cloth did you iron it well and they say you are insulting my pedigree what no 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 no. there are people who are volatile the ease with which you get irritated angry and resentful is called offense first corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 first corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 talking about love now it says love does not behave itself unseemingly seeketh not her own is not easily provoked or anger if you are truly walking in love i don't care what your background is you will not be easily angered there are people who get angry very easily very easily bros how now you say me i'm 10 years older than you i am please don't think that because me on a very good day wouldn't you be saying money easily offended you see offense is a product of judging things from the lens of your own perception of yourself when you judge things from a faulty perception things will be interpreted from the lens of your own limitation offense refuse to be offended refuse to be offended there will be occasion for offense in every relationship from a marriage relationship a business relationship ministerial relationship you must make up your mind as a choice that the blessings that i seek to receive from the relationships god is bringing in my life is greater than any offense offense destroys because you see when you are offended one of the many ways you act is speech and every time you speak with a heart of offense usually the Holy Spirit is not in charge of that conversation. You will talk in the flesh. You can make it means that you cannot withdraw again. Many people have lost precious relationships because if they were a little temperous, they would have regained it. Many people have lost business opportunities because of that. Offense. 
it's an advice it's an encouragement the bible says one of the signs that characterize the end of days is that many shall be offended let me tell you you are not a true human being if you wake up and in 24 hours there is no reason for offense especially if you are a leader people do things that should get me offended every day i do things that should get people offended every day an example is what i'm teaching now are we together now there are things that get people offended you must make up your mind that i will not be offended how many men of god get offended and they can preach they get offended at home they come and climb the stage and you know that that preaching is a lashing down of something that happened between them and their wives and their children the kind of examples they are giving are not relevant to any other member unless their family so you know that this is a this guy is just talking to his wife or the neighbor or the worker using the pulpit offense makes you small offense makes you cheap offense reduces your worth let me tell you something about offense most of those who offend you or they know they offended you the goal is that their joy is in your reaction most of those who offend offend intentionally but when you grow above it you demonstrate that you are living at a higher level of living after this service now on your way home an angry driver an angry man something will happen that will offend you or you must make up your mind and say satan you're a liar i already see your hand i will not be offended say in the name of jesus i reject offense is god speaking to us number four how do we maintain relationships practice forgiveness practice forgiveness mark chapter 11 verse 25 then ephesians 4 32 please give it to us mark 11 25 practice forgiveness i don't know one relationship including the one of you and god that can thrive without forgiveness it's not god you are forgiving god is forgiving you all the time because there are people who really are angry with god okay i forgive you god let's get back into the relationship and when ye stand praying most prayer warriors miss this let me tell you why there is hardship in people's prayer lives it's not all about demons and when ye stand praying what is the rule forgive comma if ye have ought against any that your father in heaven may forgive you your trespasses it's amazing how we pile up people in our hearts some of us have physical books physical books like police reports where you write this sister jane embarrassment sam laughing at me pastor alpha shouted at me the other day while he was preaching and you write everything protocol department <laughs> their own star 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 they offended me ushers i was falling before everybody and they were watching me i injured myself and you write it down then you leave everything and say father don't you know that i'm human and god says really it's like a small child that begs you for something then you give him and say give back and he refuses that's exactly what we do you can never live in this life without forgiveness what is forgiveness forgiveness is giving forgiveness is giving it is giving pardon and mercy forgiveness a disposition where you are ready to let go even before the offense happens forgiveness forgiveness is a, is a dimension of giving if you are not a forgiver you are not a giver not forgiving is one way of manifesting greed it's not just refusing seed forgiveness but let me balance very quickly you don't forgive just to make peace forgiving to make peace is one of the benefits of forgiveness but the primary purpose of forgiveness is to release yourself so you can move forward because there are times the people you forgive are still not ready to receive it let me be very honest and let me balance forgiveness is only useful when there is repentance a willingness to turn away 
Forgiveness is useless to the person you are forgiving if there is no repentance. It is useful to you. Let me show you what offense does. Um, can I use someone? Sam, please come. Watch this. This is what offense does. I want to move forward, but I think Sam is standing my way. And so I'm trying to push him. Will I move forward holding him? I'm trying to hold Sam. I can't move forward myself. This is what forgiveness is. He can be there, not even deserving it. But I release him so that I can move forward. I can leave him and his trouble there. If he accepts that he is wrong and turns, then we make peace and we can work together. If he refuses, I still forgive so that I can move forward. Let me tell you, the most wounded in the refusal to forgive is the offender or the offended. The person who was offended is the one who is most wounded. It is painful that the person who even offended you is not even aware and plans to do it again because it was a product of mindset. So your assignment is to have a disposition where you forgive. As a leader, people will offend you every day. People will do wrong things every day. You must forgive. Hallelujah. Everybody say, I receive grace to forgive. Say, I let go everyone. I'm holding in my hands. Holding people. Hold them in your heart. I will never forgive my mother except I may have said my own. And you can never receive blessings. I will never forgive my father for what my father has done. If I have a knife, I will kill him by myself and say, Daddy, die. I'm the one killing you. I will never forgive that person who raped me when I was four years old. I will never forgive that, uh, what they call it now, that brother. He went out with me and broke and scattered my heart. Please forgive so that you can move forward. Forgive so that you can move forward. Turn it into prayer in one minute. Lord, I'm tired of holding people down. I release right now. I let go that boss in the name of Jesus. I release my husband, I release my wife, I release my co-worker, I release my business partner, I release the man of God, I release my head of department, I release my escorts, I release the members in my department, I release Joshua Selman, make sure you pray, I release everyone who has offended me. Because I want to move forward, I want to move forward, practice forgiveness. Hallelujah. It says, And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake forgave us. Very quickly, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Okay, Ephesians 4, verse 32 is there. And then give us Luke chapter 6, verse 37. Luke 6, 37. Let's hurry up. Luke 6, 37. Luke chapter 6, verse 37. It says, Judge not. And ye shall not be judged. In other words, every time you judge people, you are scheduling seasons for yourself. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Make sure you practice this. Make sure you practice this. Number five, very quickly. How do I mean quality relationships? Be tolerant. Be tolerant. Forgiveness is different from tolerance. Forgiveness is somebody's shortcomings that he hopefully will adjust from it. Tolerance is somebody's personality or a default belief system that may not change. You have to incorporate it as part of that person's living. There are people, I wish I would tell you everybody around you will change. There are people who will not change. So you switch from forgiveness to tolerance. You accommodate that limitation in their life, factor it and build a system around it. Is God speaking to us? Yes. I have many friends, all kinds of friends. And just like me, they are very funny people. Everybody has all kinds of attributes. The same way I am to them too. But it takes tolerance. There are some things in me, unfortunately, may not change. Tolerance. You don't, you clean it. I like everybody around me to talk. But say, I don't talk. You don't need forgiveness. What do you need? Tolerance. Or you, you talk too much. 
I just ask you a question. Where is where is uh, my trouser? He said, uh, the other one, I didn't ask you about what happened. Where is my trouser, please? Tolerance. Your destiny helper may be a talkative. If you are tolerant to the talkativeness, then you receive the breakthrough. Everybody in your life cannot be you and cannot be like you. If everybody was like me, the world would be a terrible place. You would think the world would be a nice place. No. You don't want to know some of the boring aspects of my life. This world would be a sad place. <laughs> you will only be studying and reading and sleeping. What a world. I am so happy for people who are not me. They add flavor. I benefit from the joy of them not being me. You must have a high degree of tolerance. Colossians chapter 3. Please help us. 12 and 13. Colossians chapter 3. It's called forbearance. You must tolerate people. Put on therefore as the elect of God. Holy and beloved. Bowels of mercy. Kindness. Humbleness of mind. Meekness. Long suffering. 13. Forbearing one another. And forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any. Even as Christ forgave. So also do ye, forbearing one another. You have business partners, you need forbearance. Are we together? You are in your office working, you need forbearance. In a ministry like this, you need forbearance. Everybody cannot be you. Brothers and sisters, learn this. Oh God, change them. Wonderful prayer. But they have their wills. If they don't change, does that mean you will not move forward? Tolerance. Number six. The sixth principle for maintaining quality relationships is that you must be a contributor to the growth of the other party or the parties involved. You maintain relationships by being valuable to the relationship. You must be a contributor. There are parasitic relationships. Relationships are meant for mutual benefit. Maybe not equally mutual in, in terms of degree of contribution I cannot be your friend and be at a high level with you when you are not contributing anything in my life no Ejimi is my friend he contributes greatly in my life I contribute greatly in his life so there is a basis for continuity are we together now if you are not valuable to a relationship that relationship's lifespan is very small it will never please hear this this is true for marriage it is true for business it is true for ministry there are many people who complain and say joshua selman doesn't want to be my friend doesn't want to be this and i said no no i want to be your friend it's just that i am passionate about value be a contributor money is not the only thing to contribute love kindness godliness are we together now there are so many things to bring into a relationship not everybody's looking for money in a relationship there are people who have conquered that realm. they need love they need value they need understanding they need help you must learn this if you want a guy to come into your life what value are you going to bring as a guy what value are you going to bring even the church and Christ truly speak he doesn't need anything from us but because of his love he limited himself to allow us space to be able to contribute something that's why when we worship and praise him is we 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 we're not necessarily adding anything to him but he has limited himself that way so that it can give us room for expression relationships must be mutually beneficial if there are five people in a business and only two are running that business they are the two who will be the closest of friends the rest will just be freelance people around who will feel angry don't be angry in a relationship that you are not bringing quality value please i want us to go back home and think about the reason why our family members do not value us so much the reason why even in the house of god it's true that we love everybody unconditionally but we are not committed to everybody at the same level it is according to contribution say amen you must be a contributor if you are helping me spiritually you will be close to me 
if you are helping me financially you will be close to me if you are helping me in terms of the love for God if you are helping me fulfill my assignment you will be close to me if you are not doing any of this I love you but you can't expect to be close to me the same way if I'm not contributing meaningfully to your life you love me but I can't be close to you relationships are based on contributions I want you to learn this wanting friends around you to be so committed without anything to bring to the table is flattery brothers and sisters there must be a commitment no matter how little it is it may be prayer it may be love it may be rest sister you may not be educated but you can bring love you can bring patience are we together yes you are the one that when the guy is getting sad he said no calm down it may not be so you are the guy that will say no 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 my dear calm down i know she offended you but take it easy there has to be a contribution you walk with the holy spirit you are rebellious you are disobedient you don't pray no secret place and you say lord why are you not close to me and he says what is all this are you not hearing what the apostle is saying you have to be the mutual contribution give me time i give you more of myself become a contributor to the growth of the relationship number seven so we wrap up for tonight practice genuine love the last key to maintaining quality relationship practice genuine love underline the word genuine there are many people whose relationships are purely based on what I will get in as much as I have spoken about value brothers and sisters if the only basis for relating people is what you will get you are a selfish personality whether as a husband as a wife as a man of God as a member as a worker as a career person as a business person it is not always about what you will get it is about who you are are we together my life will be an ugly life if the only people in my life are just those who can contribute to me no while we were yet sinners unable to contribute anything in due season Christ died for us Proverbs chapter 10 verse 12 please quickly Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 12 hatred stirred up strife but love covers what let me tell you something brothers and sisters it is one proof that the friend you have whether it's a love relationship or any kind of relationship will last when you truly love somebody you will make very legitimate excuses for their weaknesses it will be difficult for you to find reasons to throw people away if you can throw people easily it's a sign that you don't deserve to be close to them love can cover a multitude of sins I see people in relationships, not love, really, all kinds of relationships, and the ease with which they get offended. No, sir. If five people come into your life, not love relationship now necessarily, five people come into your life, none of them can stand two weeks. The problem is you, not them. Are we together? Hatred, stirred up strife, but love covereth. How many sins? That means there is nothing anybody does to you that cannot be covered when there is genuine love. The secret to peace, all kinds. John 13, 35. John 13, 35. Then give us 1 John 4, 20. 1 John 4, 20. John 13, 35. John 13, verse 35. By this shall how many men all men know that ye are my disciples not if you pray in tongues not if you have a Christian name if ye have love not for God love for one another loving God is not necessarily the ultimate proof that you are walking in love because it says that if you love God that you do not see or you don't love your neighbor that you see how can you claim you love God that you see listen brothers and sisters this issue of loving one another is something we must indoctrinate ourselves in I, I have told myself i cannot hate anybody in the house of god no impossible impossible truly speaking i'm not just saying it 
I live a very peaceful life. <laughs> Apostle, why are you angry? Can you? No. I've been delivered. been delivered. I live a happy and peaceful life. Peaceful life. Very peaceful life. Very peaceful life. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. If ye have love one to another. Do you love people or do you use people? You can use people. You can use a relationship. You can use a wife. You can use a husband. You can use a boss. You can use employees. Pastors, you can use members. You can use workers. The workers in this ministry know with all humility that I love them with all my heart. I love the leaders. They know it. I'm lavish about it. I love them with all my heart. How could I ever hate the people that so serve with all their heart? This is why some of us never get the anointing. This is why many of us never command results. Our hearts are full of hatred. There is always one bad story to say. No. First John 4 verse 20. And then we round up. First John 4 verse 20. God has spoken to us tonight. If a man say, even if his name is Joshua Selman, if Joshua Selman says, I love God, like many Christians say, and hated his brother, he didn't say hated, he didn't describe what kind of brother and the offense the brother did. He just said if he hated his brother, please read on if you're a Christian. What is he? He didn't say he's an angry person and God understands. That person is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he had seen, how can he love God that he had not seen? church we must not only love jesus we must love ourselves more pastors who and we experience levels of the anointing when they switch just from loving god and extend it to loving men any pastor that's why i honor the lord for the ministers around i mean reverend dr tende is here god bless you thank you so much a number of other ministers scattered around every time i see them come visit like this i am very blessed love there are times I pick up my phone and I just send all my pastor friends text messages and I just tell them, how are you? How is the work? The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. There are times that I just do it to my friends. Some of you, you never do it. Say, Has he ever done it to me? You want a harvest of a seed you are not sowing? No, sir. If you had sown that seed, the friend you used to know that is now a great man, you would have maintained a relationship that would have blessed you but when you had privilege the number he had then that you had you did not invest in it and now he has changed his line only those who blessed him have the new line you are not part of them and you are angry and grumbly and say all these pastors i remember when god started helping me a lot of people were offended and said what is all this thing eh? i tried to call apostle he cannot call you call you say protocol he doesn't know me and i say you can imagine Two years you have never asked whether god whether koinonia people are eating whether how did you collect offering is god faithful are there demons attacking you can i pray you didn't send any text and then you just hear that god is faithful and you want a prayer request and just call and demand no it's not done that way it's an investment you don't get anything from it when you don't commit to it there are people who don't honor anybody they don't recognize anybody they don't care just call and say, look, I have Bishop Oedipo's number C, Bishop David Oedipo, let me call. And you call, he says, see all these organ men of God. I will not pick if I'm here. No, sir. It's not because I hate you. They are busy maintaining the relationships that are interested in them. Please don't make arrogant demands of attention over relationships you are not willing to commit to. A little prayer. I'm not talking of money. A little prayer man of god how are you sir just to find out mommy how are you daddy how are you pastor how are you it's been three years we've not seen i hope god is doing well god bless you and increase you they are noting it even if they don't have time to reply they are noting it the day they see that number there are many numbers i don't have say but if i see them i know i know that this person cares a lot about the ministry how is koinonia some people are very sarcastic Greetings here. My name is this. These are my problems. You just listen. It bless you. And I say, what? Just like that? No. There are people who only call when they need help. 
sir, um, just to greet you, my mother has come again, honestly. Uh, my father has come again, oh, my sister. Remember the, the thing I told you the other time? You don't remember me? I, I'm sorry, was it last week? No, I met you June last year now. June last year. I met you and you are reminding me today. No. You must invest in relationships. You must love. Brothers and sisters, I stand by the integrity of God's word. And I tell you this. If you practice these things before last koinonia it would have changed your life there are some of you this is what you need this is the revelation you need to enter the next level it's not like the job cannot come there are many people now that admission will start you're going to start disturbing our daddy prof and disturbing a lot of other people sir i remember it's me that sent you cv and says is it because i'm coming for koinonia and you are seeing me like that You've never done anything. You've never said take five for life and all of that. No, 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 no. Sir, the, the, uh, just to let you know that uh, by God's grace, I'll be finishing now. You promised me in 300 level that you'll give me money for, for project. You didn't follow it up, not in prayer, not with wisdom. No. Please learn this. Practice this right now. Call write the list of the top 10 relevant people in your life and start investing in them and watch what happens to you because when a man loves you everything he has loves you too if a millionaire loves you his money loves you too an anointed man loves you his anointing will love you there are anointings that reject people yes that's why people don't receive we're going to pray and you are going to cry to the lord and say lord the answer to my challenge will have to be one of these five. Either I have not paid the price knowing you, or I have not genuinely submitted to authority. I have not committed myself to mental transformation. I have not paid the price to be skillful and valuable, or I have not paid the price to build and maintain quality relationships. Please rise up on your feet and let's pray. Thank the Lord for the word you've heard tonight. Lift your voice and begin to bless him. Extraordinary results. Results that defy limitation. These are the systems of the kingdom we engage in. Are you praying? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to know you. I want to see your face. I want to know you, Lord. I want to touch you. I want to hear your voice. I want to know you. Listen, life will challenge your knowledge of God. You can know God as a theory. One day, the reason why many believers give up, just like some of you now, let me tell you the mystery of tiredness and leaving God is because there was no encounter in the first place let's be careful the kind of believers who are producing in church i know when i talk like this people think i'm just being sarcastic no i love the body of christ but we need to re-examine the quality of the harvest we are bringing because we are bringing believers who don't know god they don't care about god they have zero passion for the things of god they will tell you i'm not called into ministry god has called me into business in other words keep all that one to the business people Whoever told you knowing God was for pastors? Whoever told you knowing God was for men of God and their wives and their children? But the people that do know their God. You want a harvest of strength? You want a life of exploits and triumph? The first prize is to know God. I can pray for you, but I can't know God for you. You can benefit from my relationship. But brothers and sisters, everybody will stand before that Red Sea. 
whether you are married when you get to the red sea pastor you will stand there and your wife will stand before her red sea it is her faith that will bring her victory you can't intercede for people indefinitely forever no sir are we together but the people who do know their god i talk to pastors and they tell me apostle how do you manage criticism how you do you manage this you know people who like me don't no longer like me and i look at them i say oh dear you are just like a patient comes to tell the doctor and says look i've been purging i've been coughing and while he's talking the doctor is seeing symptoms of cholera are you seeing that now that's the same way do you know most of our lamentations are a window into something that is wrong most likely we don't know god most likely hmm. that's why you can say father i i thank you i know you will bless me but lord if you don't bless me anything i do oh, that's your cup of tea that kind of talk is a revelation that there is no encounter because when you know god he infects you like a virus you come to a point where you say lord seeking you for results is over forever i seek you first for who you are results or no results i'm stuck with you i'm stuck with you it's a salt covenant i'm stuck with you forever are we together everybody say the price of intimacy say it say the price of intimacy can you boldly stand please i want you to listen to my message knowing god experientially is a powerful message knowing god experientially teaches you the system of knowing god let me tell you how god causes men to know him he introduces himself to people and his dimensions in the presence of their challenges and predicaments only challenges can help men know god there's no other way to know him the names of god scattered in the bible were a revelation of him in the presence of certain challenges most people know god as healer just because they saw benny him praying or they came for miracle service but the day you stand face to face with a doctor's report that says look madam um i'm sorry to tell you this but it's not like you may not give birth you cannot give birth we have done the scan and we realize that you don't even have a womb he says sorry come again say look i'm a consultant so you are not talking to a stupid person there is no womb at that point you go back and say god is this not your word let me tell you what it will do to you challenges shake us up all of a sudden and make god serious you know that there is a way you can be trivializing god but then certain challenges just shake you ordinarily you will not wake up by 2 a.m in the night but the reality of what has confronted you forces you to wake up you don't need alarm clock you don't need lipton you don't need coffee the pressure and all of a sudden you pray let me tell you something after nine months when you hold that child you are not holding a child you are holding a testimony other people are dancing over a child you are dancing over a testimony so the day they prophesy and say may the god that can open up a door in one year open your door other people are saying amen the moment let me tell you how you receive things in the spirit yes you receive by faith but your past experiences with god help you to receive the newer things he's bringing god looks for something he has done in your life before and connects it to what you are trusting him for are we together when david was fighting goliath remember he drew from the archives of god's faithfulness do you have a name you have given god based on something only you and him know or are you just reciting the names that you read in the bible rafa jire pastor there is a name you call your wife it's none of my business it's none of our business that is a product of intimacy there is a name you call somebody when you are angry there is a name you call somebody when the times are good there is a even as friends is that true what is the name of god that is a product of your knowing him what name did you give him 
is there a secret name that every time you call god says i know this voice uh -uh. no one else calls me this name when pastor alpha's wife hears him calling that name he can't mistake it she can't mistaking it for me even if i know the name it won't sound like that there is a mystery behind the name there is a way when people in the bible said rafa there were too many stories that came to their mind but today you say rafa your mind is blank no experience to connect to rafa oh jehovah jireh as abraham abraham knows jehovah jireh but we sing it jehovah jireh my provider and we jump around and there is no revelation that connects that that's why africa has resorted to calling him names in their languages because they found out that it, it has it can help when that gentleman was calling whatever he was saying i was happy because he was not just reciting a poem a name that relates to your pain you don't survive an accident and call god jireh you call him the deliverer the deliverer so when somebody sees you say how oh, the deliverer is here they say ah, in a prosperity convention say mr man is the dimension of god that was revealed to me that i keep calling what is the name what is the name we've had our fathers call god names that were strange to us we copied it but it's time for us to have a genuine encounter genuine encounter the price of intimacy koinonia please listen to me no level of business acumen no level of education can cover the gap that intimacy was meant to cover but the people that do know their god if you're a pastor please don't do ministry without knowing god you will die like a chicken you will sit down one day on the stage and start crying and the people ask you what is going you say i, I don't know The price of intimacy there are certain things about intimacy i want us to understand number one please i'm taking out time to just i want us to understand this thing intimacy takes time you cannot know a man a woman you are willing to spend time with no sir intimacy is a product of time you don't give God five minutes and get Benny Hinn's encounter please God is not that cheap my brother my sister listen to me you need to spend time he must mean a lot to you number two God must become priority to have intimacy with him the Bible says don't cast your pearl before swine I've said it you don't come to someone's house and then he takes you to his bedroom shows you where he keeps money no sir when you come sometimes you will even stand at the gate sometimes you will enter and stay inside sometimes you will stay at the parlor you will not even have access to the kitchen but there are certain people while all that is happening the child can run and even enter the bedroom The price for intimacy i look at the lives of people believers yes we are born again yes we are filled with the holy spirit but when i look at our lives i don't see priority passion for god is contagious when a brother likes a lady no matter how he tries to hide it his roommate will know is that true the roommate will say you just spoke to five people but this sixth person the joy at which you used to call that lady this joy is not natural correct you are hugging everybody after service and then the way you hug that lady the brother said this hug is too generous for just brotherly kindness no what is there's more to this i say it's true i've been looking at her passion passion has a presence don't lie to us that you love god when we cannot see the passion Passion has a presence. I hunger and thirst for you in a dry and weary land. 
to be established one is you must be ready to invest your time you give God five minutes of your time you get five minutes worth of knowledge second is priority third is your willingness to lay down ha. The, the Bible calls it the power to lay down this is where some of you will not like me now this is where many believers will not like me now because our generation has been indoctrinated that you can eat your cake and have it no sir go and ask anybody even an occultist you don't eat your cake and have it you cannot know god without a sacrifice i'm not talking money a sacrifice fasting is a sacrifice prayer is a sacrifice are we together studying the bible is a sacrifice we don't like this language at all yet we want power we want results sacrifice there are times that on account of your intimacy with god you just want to eat and the word of the lord comes to you go on a three-day fast oh god which breakthrough is coming now god said this is not issue of breakthrough you are about i'm about to reveal i'm about to open you up to certain encounters and i said god this is not flamboyant enough if that you told me that i after this three days fast land will manifest from anywhere and come it's a worthy investment to fast but wh why will i fast to know you what is the big deal about you when i'm looking for land and god will say you see it you see your heart As if I hold my hands again. Everybody says sacrifice. I am amazed at the difficulty that believers go through to lay down the slightest thing. Slightest thing. So this suit, you discuss with God for one year before it leaves. You are carnal and you don't love him. It's the truth. Empty your account. I curse that, that devil. You argue for two years first and finish the money till 10,000. I said, God, I will lay it down. God says, just leave. I will tell you when to do it again. Are you willing to lay down? Jesus said, I have the power to lay down. Let me show you maturity in the spirit. When a man has gotten to a point where there is nothing you cannot lay down. Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest many of us will agree to fast for 400 days than to lay down something for him everybody say sacrifice 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 when god makes that demand that you are willing to sacrifice you will know him let me tell you i submit to you with all humility this man standing before you is a testimony of sacrifice ask god there is nothing i cannot lay down for him oh it's a joke before he finishes talking it will go i have exercised myself to see the vanity of anything outside of god you must lay down the bible says love not the world usually it's those who hate money that preach that message no it's all those who are poor and broke they preach it as a consolation to their poverty no sir you should not preach that message until you are really rich love not the world or the things that are in the world if any man loves the world he did say don't have those things an affinity to it god gave you a car and the car took his place god gave you a wife and the wife took his place god gave you children they took his place god gave you a, a job paying six figures and he lost you in that job is god speaking to someone here god increase your cgpa and that's the end of it 
God connected you to a good brother, a good sister. God gave you a business idea. And with that idea, he lost you. No, sir. No, sir. Sacrifice. That Lord, for as long as I live, in life and in death, you remain my priority. And that if need be, I will lay aside anything. If God tells me, lay aside koinonia now, brothers and sisters, is with tears we hold the last valedictory service. I will hold the last service. I don't care what prophet comes from where and says, Apostle, I think you are not hearing God well. I will apologize when God changes his mind, but for now, koinonia closed. Apostle, what do you do with the lives you are blessing? I don't know. Ask the one who sent me, but koinonia closed. There is a way you can do ministry. You have carried your reputation and your life and added to it. When God says shift left, God says, and then leave me where? Are we together? I want you to look at your life now. Let me show you why money is not coming to your life. Leave, leave business. We are coming there. But we are examining why there are some of us, regardless of our prayer, Satan enters our life anyhow. Do you know why? Because the lust in your heart needs to be purged beyond imagination. Your attachment to things. You, God would dare not make a demand of anything. What sort of thing is that? Who gave you the life? Many of you would have noticed that from August, August till now, I'm not sure I've gone from over four ministrations. Cancelled almost everything. It's just been maybe one or two ministrations per month and the rest. Very unusual because that's the instruction God gave. And I said, that's it. Let me tell you, there are certain people that I would have wanted to be in their meetings with all my heart. But I love God. There's nothing I know that moves the heart of God than him seeing something you ordinarily love. But you say, Lord, it is for you. He says, that's it. This is what I'm looking for. If this handkerchief is five naira and I tell you I brought this handkerchief from the UK are we together I bought it whatever amount one pound and I carried it from the UK and I brought they wanted to collect it but I hid it back immigration wanted to harass me but I said this is for you if I give you will you give somebody for one thousand it's not about the sacrifice have increased the value of it There is no rising in the spirit when you are holding on to everything. Jealousy, anger, huh? all kinds of things. Please, let's re-examine these things. If we really want results, God declared that it's a year of triumph. But it's your heart with him. It's your heart with him. Apostle, all I want is just pray for me. Let a husband come. Keep quiet, oh sister, and listen to what I'm telling you because... It's not just the issue of pray for husband. God has already seen the wickedness in your heart. And God is saying, no way. You must love me first before I carry my son that I've labored on to carry and give you. Oh God, just bless me. I need to be a millionaire. I've seen this thing in my dream. And God said, if you don't listen to my servant, you will, it will remain in the dream there. It takes hunger for God. How many people have made money and left God. Have you seen people like that? Anybody that says money does not give you an option is a poor and a broke person who doesn't know anything about money. Because when you have money, there are few things you will pray about. Correct? Many prayer requests are tied to finances. And let me be honest with you, there is a level in your life that you get to where you don't think about money again. You may not have everything. But you get to a point where all your basic needs can be met to the degree you want them to be met. At that point, that's how you see how carnal and mundane your heart is. Because there's nothing else. I understand praying for six hours because of the emergency that is on you. But when His Majesty has lifted your life beyond certain realms, that's when you will know and prove whether He's really Lord in your life. My number one prayer to God every time is so God for as long as I live may nothing win my heart so much enough to be able to push you 
and say god wait behind just because a door of ministry was open wait behind oh god benny Hinn is calling me wait behind billy graham gave me the privilege to see him before he dies wait behind bill gates just called me and he said he wants to bless a man of god on earth and favor located me no sir no sir lord make me your priority make me your priority make me your priority this was the secret of david make me your priority priority means you mean the world to me you mean the world to me brothers and sisters get my passion for god i pray that god will, will whatever it is that god did to me i pray that it will happen to you because if truly speaking you want to do business with god you must love him beyond things things beyond things beyond things i love him with all my heart i love him my heart is open before him is the god of my salvation i love him with all my heart i will lay down anything for him anything anything i really mean it i really mean it don't think i'm just talking i fear god i will lay down anything reputation nonsense if you can lay down anything in his presence and go down on your knees and say lord this is for you i lay down my pride i lay down my achievements oh i have a phd in so 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 and so just calm down first oh lord i hand it over to you there's nothing god loves like surrender 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 it's yours that's a language that is music to his ears the anointing lord you gave me is yours the grace you gave me is yours and while people are clapping for you in the open apostle joshua selman you come before him and say lord without you i can go nowhere Papa, apostle tell the truth as anointed as you are without you hmm. the wife of david looked at him and said you are dancing you are you are you are misrepresenting yourself you don't know you are a king before god and david said me you don't know my track record with this god I've told God one day to me leaving you, please, if it means me taking my life, let it be that I didn't finish my assignment, but that you remain my priority. I surrender all. Everything I give to you. I'm withholding nothing. Listen to the song before you sing it. Lord, I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. I'm withholding nothing. Listen, the key to dying, killing your reputation, and the, the key to entering your rest is to hand over your life to God. I don't have any reputation, no brothers and sisters. My reputation is God. You know, there are times that sometimes I chat with the media people and they tell me, you know, someone, all these people that write all kinds of things, sometimes they send mails, sometimes sarcasm, people say all kinds of things. I say, Apostle, your reputation, and I laugh. I say, ah, reputation died since when? If I had a reputation of my own, wouldn't I be under pressure right now? Let me tell you what is causing stress. The fight to protect our reputation. That's it so that people will not think i'm poor let me prove a point and god is saying what point come on to me come on to me i need people to know that me i'm not i'm not just a i'm not i'm not a poor man i i need to go and buy a trouser and god says no i am your reputation i am your inheritance listen let me teach you people the secret of rest there are many pastors wearing themselves out i need crowd so that they will know that me too i'm anointed if if a man can receive nothing except it is given to him from god 
I learned to rest in him. He truly is my rest. <laughs> it's my rest. That's why the ministry has been designed in such a way that whether I'm here or not, God will be glorified. It can't be around me. No, sir. If I die now, God forbid, ah yes, you will just cry for seven days. You will try to pray and raise me back to life maybe two or three days. After three days, I guarantee you will be tired small. And you just say, Tom, what do we do? They say, let's just give God praise. Somebody will have a dream and see me say, please bury me, Jerry, and leave me in peace. Ah, but he said you will not die. While you are talking all that nonsense, I'm in heaven. Happy and rejoicing and looking at you and saying, instead of crying for me, you better go and listen to my messages. And make a meaning out of your life. For for me to live is Christ. But to die is gain. Look at the stress that is killing you. Is it not because of ego? Talk to me. 90% of the depression that is killing us in this life is an attempt to protect our image. We say, I need to guard my image. What nonsense image? Ask a man who built an image that God smashed into pieces. He built 90 feet of his image protected by bowing down. God says no. But those who entered the fire to protect the image of God, God says I come to protect you. Brothers and sisters, I give you an advice. Carry your reputation like a sacrifice. Hand it over to God and enter your rest this night. This is a deliverance for someone now. Is that true? The 40,000 house rent is killing you. You don't have the money. But to go and meet your friend and squat, you are saying, no, I need them to know. Please, enter your rest. Pack out of that place and go and give yourself peace. Instead of dying to maintain your reputation. They've been seeing me wearing only one shoe. I need to get another one. Nobody has been seeing you. People have their problems. It is your, it is your, your, the punishment that comes from not handing over everything to God. I'd like you to pray as you are seated and say, Lord, I am tired of carrying a load you told me to give you. I hand it over. Apostle, but people are always asking me, when will I marry? It will kill you don't let depression kill you hand everything over to god and enter your sabbath enter your rest a man can receive nothing until it is given to him from god pray lord make me your priority i'm willing to commit time to knowing you i'm willing to commit to surrender everything and make you a priority this obsession I have for marriage this obsession for children this obsession for job this obsession for power this obsession for ministry and rema and miracles is taking your place return back to your throne oh God If this is all I share tonight, it's worth it. Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be? That's my testimony. If you left you were. Listen, where would I be if he left me? This song means a lot to me because you see, brothers and sisters, he is the invisible force behind men who command results. You don't see him, you only see them. So chances are that they are the ones who you can shake. They are the ones who you can sow to. But every great man knows that behind him is an invisible and mighty God. Unmovable. I may shake, but he's unmovable, unshakable. 
But the people that do know their God shall defy status quo. They shall be strong and they shall do exploits. The first prize while revisiting the mysteries that make for greatness. Brothers and sisters, let's return to the place of intimacy. Let's return to the place of intimacy. This is a call. Return to the place of intimacy. Spend time with God. Draw strength from Him. Talk to Him. Don't hide anything from Him. Open your all to Him. It will be foolish and silly to hide anything from Him. Everything. Carry your pain. Carry your tears. Learn to spend time with God alone. Hold on, please. There are some of you, as I look at you, you don't yet have the passion for God to go on a personal retreat. No. You are churchy, you love God, you don't drink, you don't steal, you don't womanize, you don't follow men, but you don't love God. You can't go by yourself and lock your house and say, please, I need to spend time. Some of you, the last time you did this was a long time ago. Ministry carried its place in your life. Listen, you must learn the power of retreating. Even if it's just for a day, do it. Lock yourself. Lord, I come before you. You are the God of my strength. I am open and naked before you. These are my crowns. These are my pains. I bring them before you. And you fellowship with him. And he talks to you. Ah, my son, I love you. Correct this. Add this to your life. I'm introducing this. Begin to see things this way. And you come out of there with fire and grace. And people look at you and your life is an unending compendium of wonder. Wonder unfolding. When a man gasses out, it's a sign that he has left the secret place in a long time freshness is one of the characteristics of the secret place look at me whether you are working class or you are a student you are a father you are a mother you are a husband or a wife i'd like you to write it if you are writing i must create time alone underline alone with god mog create time more with god because all you have to serve the people is what you receive in the secret. Thank you, Jesus. That's how it works. You want to experience a, a life of unending victory. It starts that way. It starts that way. It always starts with Him, not principles. We are coming to principles, but Him not just an encounter an encounter can be a one-time experience but intimacy is fellowship is partnership staying remaining with him where he becomes your priority sister a brother comes into your life and meets you madly in love with god he won't do any how to you like that because he met when he meets you idol an uh, idol carelessly moving around waiting for a man that's when he does everything for you he comes to find you in worship can we see by this time oh i would love to but i, I need to spend some time with god ah which god so, well that's that's what i do ah by yourself you are behaving as if you're a child and he, you just see that as a sign from god that this is going to be a wicked husband you don't need to go and ask god again whether he's the will of god god answered you dear your passion forced an answer from him are we together i love god i love jesus i love him i like you to pray and say lord help me love you help me love you genuinely the price of intimacy the price of intimacy the price of intimacy let no westernization preach you out of this my brother my sister the price of intimacy let education not preach you out of this let a job let money let marriage let children not preach you out of this
way before ministry was he was and he is and will ever be in the beginning God in the beginning God in the beginning God I must become Alpha and no man of your life for anything in between to make sense please pray oh I re I reestablish my covenant of intimacy for Jesus you're the cup that will run dry Yes, you are the cup that will run dry. Other things may run dry. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Not in my life. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Hold on. It's impossible to marry a bad woman when your heart is connected to God you attract what looks like you you leave God and you are doing all kinds of rubbish the devil will bring Jezebel to your life that will tear your head and tear your anointing into pieces it's impossible to marry a bad man all these men that drive you to church they leave you somewhere sisters I'm talking to you they all go and do koinonia pray for us oh mother Teresa as soon as they are rounding up they are there by that place where they are selling something. They are waiting for you. They pick you and say, I love you. Nonsense. Let me deliver you now. If there are such kind of people in your life, you better send them a text and tell them, get out of my life so that God himself will bring my husband or my wife. Hallelujah. Anybody that hates your God and likes you is a liar. No, sir. You come under my roof, you serve what I'm serving. You serve who I'm serving. You can't be under my roof and have your own rules. No, sir. It is from your intimacy you will raise your children. You can't give what you don't have. It is from your intimacy as a pastor. Let me tell you, when you love God and you hunger after him, that fire, the people catch that fire and they love God too. You tell people to fast, you are eating secretly. You buy fish, you buy yam, you buy whatever. People are laboring and they are fasting. You will eat and belt and dress and come and round up the meeting. Intimacy. Intimacy. I'd like you to think in one minute. What is that one thing? That is currently fighting the position of God in my life. Think, don't pray. Think, what is it? What is that one thing that if God makes a demand now, honestly, I can't give it? What is it? Some of us is our reputation. I keep talking about this reputation. My class, I am this, I am that, the power of my hand. Hey. I have seen mighty people fall like a leaf overnight because God they ignored God's assistance in their life. You can be a CEO of XYZ today and be a billionaire and crash back to zero. Is God waking somebody up today? Please return to the secret place. Return to the place where he is priority. Return to the age long and age old mystery of retreats. Where you take periodic times out with God. And just spend and cry before him. And say Lord thank you. That you fast for 100 days does not mean you love God. It can just mean that you are a strong person. Congratulations for that. But it's not equal to intimacy. You're all I want. You're all I've ever needed. You're all I want. Help me know. to 
hold the hand of your neighbor and pray for him and say lord keep your love burning in him keep your love burning in her don't pray for yourself pray for your neighbor lord keep your love burning that's the investment of prayer I'm making for my neighbor whether you're a newcomer or not lord keep your let my neighbor prioritize you my neighbor loves you but you are not such a big deal to him or to her but lord walk on his heart tonight walk on her heart tonight Are you blessed are you blessed these are the mysteries let me teach you one more hmm. the second prize that I want to teach you tonight wherever we stop we'll pray we'll continue next week I'm taking this thing because I really want us to understand the second prize is the price of submission to authority listen the price of submission to authority write it down mm. the price the embarrassing ego stinging but destiny molding price of submission to authority the mysteries that turn people's lives into wonders the price of submission to authority hmm. nobody promotes himself in this kingdom you cannot promote yourself you cannot accredit yourself nobody makes himself a professor nobody makes himself a doctor is that true pastor alpha you have supervisors correct mm -hmm no student marks his project and say i passed correct no in the kingdom listen the system of rising is such that it's not only god that approves you alone men must approve you if not you will never rise listen to me your approval is not just in the hands of god alone it's in the hands of men too mm. Jesus knew this. That's why he had to look for John the Baptist. What will the Son of God be doing? The Son of God look for John the Baptist for what? For what? The word that created the heavens and the earth. Searches for John the Baptist. When John sees him, he says, he says, Behold the Lamb. That's enough to make his head big and say, Oh, so you know. Then it means I will go back. He said, No. Suffer it to be so. It's an ordinance is a secret permit it to be so i know that i created you but suffer it to be so that all scriptures will be fulfilled that there be no legal basis for my remaining small listen i know that god has approved you but have men approved you you will think it does not matter Go and find out those who made kings in the Bible, whether the spirit appeared as a ghost. God chose them, men anointed them kings. Is it in your Bible? How God anointed Jesus, but did, did it come like that? No. Samuel, how long will you weep over Saul, seeing that I rejected him? Go and take your horn. I want to use David, but you have refused to cooperate with me. I have approved him from heaven. But David cannot rise because the man that will pour the oil and approve him refused. God approves a man as a king and on earth the authority to accredit him is still negotiating. And because of that, that person remains grounded. Listen. Saul, the son of Kish, was looking for his father's donkey when he met an authority that could approve and he called him he said come go up i will tell you what is in your heart 
and all of a sudden he anointed Saul and poured oil on him and his life changed whoever lied to you that when you say to hell with men you will prosper the Bible says believe in the Lord your God you want to be established wonderful but if you want to make it in this life brothers and sisters you must submit to God's scriptural pattern of authority your alignment to God's scriptural chain of authority decides how and what flows to you your alignment to God's scriptural chain of authority determines how and what flows to you there are prophets in the Bible who were preordained by God to be prophets there were other prophets who were made prophets nowhere in the Bible it was never written that they should be prophets Amos was not a prophet he was farmer he was an agriculturist but a man saw him and made him a prophet Elisha was not a prophet oh I hope you know that when Elijah took his girdle and slapped it on Elisha while he was farming Elisha started following him the result was that he became a prophet Agabus a man in the Bible called Agabus who gave birth to daughters the Bible never tells us that they were serious spiritually but because they were born they came out of a loin the loins of a man who for whatever reason was a prophet the old daughters were prophets too your submission to authority is a mystery that governs promotion ask anybody who is honest enough to admit and tell them the day they began to discern authority what happened in their lives that's why you see those who dishonor the body of christ will never rise you've heard me say this all those who make it a point of duty they insult every man of god they insult every church once it's not your pastor everybody is an object of there is a sin that you can do against the body of christ a man cannot just sin against god alone you can sin against the body of christ and the bible says jealousy is the rage of a man i cannot come and insult a jimmy's wife and expect him to smile the first understanding of authority is your submission to the body not just to man of god not just to spiritual fatherhood your submission to the body the multifaceted dimension of god that is scattered in the body your ability to acknowledge that the body of christ is a compendium of infinite possibilities regardless of what your unique biases are when you love the body you are ready to access the deep things in the spirit god will never do business with you when you hate his body there are people who are fasting giants but their cynicism against the body mention any name of any man of god they have something to say mention that they that attitude of sarcasm and they wonder why regardless of fasting and prayer nothing comes the body the Bible says, for this cause, not discerning the body, many are weak. For this cause, many are sick. This cause, many do sleep. As a ministry, we have clearly defined our position over the body. I love the body of Christ. You will never hear me open my mouth and talk about any man of God and any ministry. It doesn't mean I believe everything. I have my reservations, but I love the body. A wounded bride is still a bride. If a woman injures her hand on her wedding day, does it stop her from marrying? That woman you insult every time, called the church, is someone's wife. Submission to the body. Submission to the body. That you discern that this body of Christ is a compendium of possibilities. The blessing of God always comes to you 
through alignment to authority the blessing of god please everyone listen the blessing of god will always come to your life through alignment write this down i learned this from dr mike mudok the primary purpose of authority is provision protection and promotion write it down the primary purpose of authority the primary purpose of authority is provision protection and promotion provision when you submit to authority you have access to the promotion that that authority commands when you submit to authority you have access to the protection we call it a covering and when you submit to authority you have access to promotion are we blessed you can never promote yourself you can never accredit yourself listen when you see people submit to authority let me tell you why people hate submission come pastor alpha there are many people what they are doing is pseudo submission you know what we call pseudo submission one leg in one leg out you are not exactly there but you are just there who is this guy well he's a very he's a senior colleague he's just a brother there you are you are you would never rise that way no way god is not a fraud star you are in it or you are out i will never forget a gentleman who walked up to me one day and said sir i've been looking at you as if he's toasting me i've been watching you i've been watching your life sir and uh, you know i just feel i need to come close to you i told this get out of here don't don't waste my time go and walk on your pride in the secret place when your discernment is complete and you understand that not all human beings are pure human beings then when you submit to a man you don't submit to a body you submit to a system are we together mm. if you fly a plane somebody drives it even if it is your jet somebody drives it the jet is guaranteed to carry you but not all everybody will be a driver that's how it is in life listen no matter how you fear god and no matter how you love god there are things that you will get based on connection you will pray in the secret place god will refer you to his structure the bible says the church was built in a very strange way it says christ being the chief cornerstone after that he said it was on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets not just by name then the body was built there are certain graces when you don't encounter in your life you will never rise i know this looks like human worship but these are the secrets that other people who are not very smart oh, they just know how to encounter it the body of christ do you have that discernment i've shared with you how we receive the grace for long life we transported the grace of for long life officially and brought it to this ministry yeah i know how we got it when we stopped at that place that border between quara state and equity state there is a strange mystery that goes on there 142 132 125 healthy ah we stopped quickly we went to the baba there we said sir there is a grace for long life here we wanted the man laugh he said kneel down he didn't say are you a pastor because when you go as a pastor you stay outside when you submission demands a stripping of whatever robe or regalia and a an acknowledgement that's what we did on a very good day he says sir i'm just returning from a ministry where there are miracles baba do you know me cannot even speak english we got we had to look for an interpreter and he spoke kneel down jerry young people we knelt down and this man began to speak i told you i met the wife of the 132 year old man who died i think she was like maybe 120 something you would think she's 60 and i told her i said ah 
when the woman saw she tapped me she said follow me i didn't care where i was going no no matter what i saw i would stay there because i know what brought me there if i was cynical i said madam where are you taking me i'm a born again believer no go there first she showed me the picture of her youth with the 132 year old man afterwards we told her that they've prayed for us but since you are the wife two have become one the man is dead you are alive so he's still alive and the woman removed her shoes said kneel down ah, what do you think i'll do hey submission submission let me tell you what many of us will do <laughs> mama just pray is that kneeling down that's pride you are not receiving a sword kneel down one of the biggest enemy of submission is that we think submission is a way of demeaning our own self now truly speaking do you know there are people who do that they purposely demean you in the name of submission that's wrong there are insecure men and women of God scouting around for anybody they can call son or daughter to increase their accolades, not because they understand what they have. And they will purposely humiliate you, especially in the open, to show. Look, Jesus was with the people who were submissive to him, but you did not even know who Jesus was. They had to use a kiss to identify him. I choose to be like him. You don't have to move around and when people are there, you say, oh, yeah, Pastor Alpha, shift, let them know I'm the one. <laughs> when they know, you can come back. I watch people who hate submission, having passion for sons and daughters. They hate submission. They hate acknowledging authorities. They come for a meeting and see a, a man of God that deserves honor, uh, all protocols duly observed. Ah, uh, Pastor Femi, hi. Is that greeting? That is that is that is the attitude of pride that drives grace down. Look, if you are anointed, you are anointed. It's as simple as that. If it's not there, it's not there. Are we together? Authority. I can share with you encounters after encounters. One of the things I love about the leaders and the people in this ministry and that's why you see that many of them have been able to reproduce this grace is because they understand submission truly speaking i tell you i am very proud of the workers in this ministry i am proud of the heads of department they understand submission submission is not a way of managing a man of god's insecurity listen never form a team where the loyalty of the people is questionable let me give you an advice if i want to create come 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 darling if i want to establish a company come one two three four if i notice your loyalty is questionable i will suck you go out wait wait oh but you are you are gifted just carry your gift and go away with it you only deal ruthlessly with rebellion listen i'm telling you people will interpret it as insecurity but it is irresponsible for a leader to see rebellion and let it go deal with it are we together yes i will not let anybody to be close to me who does not listen to me and acknowledge the authority of the lord of or on my life over him i will not I don't hate you, I won't fight you, but you certainly will not be close to me. You know why? Because you will not receive and you will corrupt the passion of others from coming to receive. Because they will say you are close. Why are you not getting this result? I say, see, yeah, this thing, is it not we that are close to them? We, we, we that are, if me, I'm close like this. Have you ever seen me heal the sick? So you should be doubting and I say, ah, you mean it? That anointing is for I didn't say he's fake. Oh, I only said, Am I not close to him? Why has it not come on me? Take those kind of people out of your life. I'm, I'm talking to you sincerely. Take them out of your life. Anybody that comes close to you, as I, I don't mean everybody, but as somebody, a man of God, or somebody that God has lifted to a measure, 
not all of them will submit to you in terms of fatherhood but they should be able to acknowledge what god is doing in your life enough to listen when there is time to listen are we together now yes you're in worship team here and your music director is talking to you and say sir like i read in the book mm -mm, keep quiet you do it again you do it tomorrow if i'm you he will never sing here again no way it's more than holding the mic and a good voice you don't listen that's how one day they'll say sing after two times transpose and you invent your own everybody transposes only you and you are just dancing because people are clapping you are dancing and you mess up team spirit only happens when there is an agreement to submit are you listening to what i'm saying that's why many people never rise all blessings come they flow from a scriptural chain of authority. A few weeks ago, Pastor Alpha went to stand in for me for a meeting and a number of our people. And after the meeting, one of the mothers there sent me a text and said, Apostle, you have reproduced yourself verbatim in these people. And I smiled. I said, they deserve it. They deserve it. One of our dear ones here, when he was in the school of ministry, you know, this was somebody that God helped. And one time he went towards their graduation time he went to minister somewhere and my goodness it was an experience there was such an avalanche of the presence and the power of God and he returned back he was saying ah this and that and that and I told him when you listen and you submit you have it everybody say submission to authority learn it today learn it we have to stop here but if just doing these two things alone the the bible says god called abraham he says a lot went with him is that in your bible lots did what he didn't say abraham said lord let's go lord said i'm going i'm sure abraham said you better go back home. and lot went with him god called elijah and elisha went with him Elisha had sons of the prophets who paid school fees. In all you're getting, get wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Through wisdom is a house built. And by understanding, it is established. Join, Join Apostle, Apostle Joshua Selman of Eternity Network, Network International, International as he takes you on a journey into, into the wisdom of God's, God's Word. It's intimacy. It's partnership. It's fellowship. This is Koinonia. Father, bless you. Lift your voice and bless him. Ask him to bless you tonight. Jesus, we bless you. Jesus, we bless you. We are faithful. We honor you. We bless you. We bless you. To you be all the glory in the name of Jesus. We're going to pray in tongues. Please hold your hands together. Please, guys, come up. You can come. Just hold the mic. Worship team, you can excuse them for a while. Um, Benga, come up. Promise we're going to pray very seriously in tongues. Remember, I told us we are pushing some things in the spirit. Praise the Lord. After we've praised, let's pray. There's still space. Kenny, Fanny, Pastor Alpha, come up. Let's just fill the mics. We're going to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I'd like you to lift your voice. Say after me, in the name of Jesus. Shout it again, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that every stronghold attempting to stop prophecy from manifesting in my life, I challenge you right now. Lift your voice and pray. Shaka, <laughs> <laughs> 
of the fathers affecting my lineage and wanting to affect my life I decree and declare I've been called out of every tribe every tongue every nation release me now release my destiny lift your voice and say release me in the name of Jesus the ordinances of darkness the spirit of ancestry over my life. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. The spirit of a hard life. The spirit of hardship. A hard life. Pray, pray, pray. Lift your voice and pray. Pray! 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 Pray!
Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every force of darkness sitting on my glory, stopping it from manifesting. I curse you in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and prophesy. I command my light to shine. I command my light to shine. The Bible says, Arise, shine, for your light is come. I decree and declare, it's my season of triumph. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. One more time in the name of Jesus. Every force stopping my helpers from reaching me through bad reports through divination through misguided reports I command in the name of Jesus that the Lord is against you release my helpers to my destiny lift your voice and pray please pray whether you understand what you are praying or not pray open your mouth and pray Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yet the set time, the set time, set time, the set time is now. Hallelujah. I like you to pray this one with all your heart. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit, every spirit that makes men trivialize my gifting, that, that make men trivialize the anointing on my life, that makes men trivialize what God is doing to me. I come against you right now. In the name of Jesus, it's my season of celebration. Lift your voice and prophesy. The spirit that causes men to trivialize what you represent, to trivialize what God is doing in your Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus, everything that should be in my life now and was hijacked by the enemy, I place a demand in the name of Jesus. Locate my destiny now. Lift your voice and pray. Pray, pray, lift your voice and pray. Like the bones in the valley of Ezekiel, I command let bones be joined to bones. Opportunity joined to opportunity. Favor joined to favor. Say after me in the name of Jesus, every force of darkness 
programmed to kill my prayer life programmed to kill my passion for God programmed to kill my appetite for the world I come against you right now lift your voice and redeem your prayer life lift your voice and redeem your, your world life Hallelujah. Everyone will pray this, but the brothers I want you to pray this. Praise the Lord. Brothers, when we raise this prayer and I see any brother looking at me and you are not praying, I walk up to you and hold your hand. It's a serious prayer. Say in the name of Jesus, the grace for speedy establishment. Lord, release it upon my life. Lift your voice and pray. The grace that causes men to be established on time. There is a cause of darkness that causes men to be established late. At 40, you are still in your father's house. At 40, you are still living from hand to mouth. It's a cause. Please pray. Please help us on the Establish me. Send me help from Zion. Establish me on time, on time, on time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone pray this. But I want our sisters to pray this with all your heart. Say in the name of Jesus. The spirit of unnecessary lateness. The spirit of unnecessary lateness. in life. Financial lateness. I curse you in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. It should happen on time. It should happen on time. There is a time allocated. Every time is not convenient. There is a time allocated. Shabakata lato sekete. Every take it on scapalato. name of Jesus father I know it is within your power to turn my life around I ask you in the name of Jesus turn my life around lift your voice and pray change my story my life around pray pray do a new thing do a new thing what has not been done before not the same kind of miracle not the same kind of do a new thing something that has never happened before do a new thing change my life turn it around oh God Hold it 
Let me add this one more prayer. He says, Son of man, can this bone live again? And the prophet said, Honestly, I've been a prophet. Oh, prophesying is not something that is new, but this for this case, I don't know. And then he said, Professor, he didn't say discuss, he didn't say cry. In one minute, I'm not going to tell you what to say, but I want you to stand and look at your destiny. I want you to prophesy, carry the word of God like a drug, put it on your destiny. My destiny, I speak to you. You are alive, hear the word of the Lord. I command you to rise, I command you to grow. I program faith for you. Pray. I program breakthrough in you. I prophesy to you. In the name of Jesus, I speak to my destiny. You are a manifestation of the word of God. You are a manifestation of the faith of God. You are the manifestation of the goodness of God. I take away pain from my destiny. I take away regrets from my destiny. I take away sorrow from my destiny. I prophesy goodness. I prophesy joy unspeakable, full of glory. you have prayed I decree over your life the Lord has declared that this is the year of triumph we are angry and we are insisting that it must happen therefore I decree and I declare that if there is anyone under the sound of my voice under any kind of siege that will not let you see the faithfulness of God I decree and I declare right now that power leaves your life right now that force lives your life right now. Hallelujah. We're about to listen to the word. While your hands are lifted, I want to do an impartation of understanding. Listen. Most people think they know, they understand scripture. It's not true. I decree and I declare, I stretch my hands towards you. May the spirit of understanding, capacity to comprehend the systems of the kingdom, I release it upon you right now. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. I open your understanding. I open your understanding. I open your understanding. I command your mind to be receptive. I decree that your spirit will beat the signal in the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down if you can. God bless you. Good evening. Brothers and sisters, the weeks that are coming will really mean business. You know, I've been saying this. I know it in my spirit when a reality has been declared to manifest from the realm of the heavens. But you know that it is not yet your experience. There is no believer 
who sits down knowing what God has ordained for your life and watching the enemy play games with your life and you sit down and hope things will change no sir you have to engage with understanding engage with understanding until that which is yours comes to you the bible says right from the days of john the baptist and until now he says the kingdom suffered violent and the violent the violent spiritually violent those who will insist and say i'm not taking anything less than this promise of god's word they are the ones who take it by force i am passionate about results i never never associate with anything that does not have capacity to produce results i am a result driven person this is a result driven ministry the fierceness of life does not allow for stories and drama people want real results in their lives and let me tell you this if you're a man of god here listen to me no matter what you claim to be doing if it does not translate into genuine results you are wasting people's time it's as simple as that herein is our father glorified 15 verse 8 john hearing this is how god takes glory from men when ye bear much fruit when your results are notable beyond argument notable beyond sentiment he said by so doing you will prove that you are my disciples you will prove that you have sat down under my mentorship and tutelage your results validate the efficacy of the teaching ministry of the holy spirit when our lives are barren of certain dimensions of results it's an indictment on the person and the ministry of the holy spirit results that defy background results that defy the expectations of naysayers and men and women who look forward to your failure as their self-fulfilling prophecy but you must contend for it hallelujah i've been thinking you know i've been thinking about you all through the week my mind has just been lord there are dimensions that we must enter before the end of this year the word of god will not go void when god speaks it is within his power to make it happen are we together but it is always been a partnership it's always been that way that the heavens must partner with the earth for realities to be established here and so my assignment is to scan through and make sure that we tie every loose end that can force or that can can sabotage this prophecy from finding expression my job is to search and find out and to remind us and indoctrinate us with the truths that are capable of bringing results results that are predictable results that are consistent results that have nothing to do with the wishes of men hearing is our father glorified hearing if you have ever wondered how god takes glory from men this is how it happens when you bear much fruit much fruit much fruit not little fruit much fruit when results become um become notable notable and consistent it will compel any force of darkness regardless of sentiment to know that the hand of god is upon your life hallelujah every dimension in the spirit has a price every level every dimension of greatness has a price and by the grace of god he has granted us this privilege as a ministry to laboriously open god's people to the 
demands the price requirement the cost dimension of certain results that we need i am passionate about connecting people's desires to the formula and the principles that have been designed for those outcomes to manifest it is one thing if you can tell me what you want if you can tell me what you desire i can show you the mystery that is allocated for that result there is a price i wish everything were would just happen without your cooperation but that's not the way the system of god works there is a price the price we are talking about is the price of alignment the price of partnership because you see the operation of the system of the kingdom as we have learned is such that it comes by grace but it says through faith they are not the same thing by grace made available through faith the summation of your partnership that causes that reality that is available grace makes it available it creates the possibility but your engaging the word accordingly makes it your experience grace does not make it your experience grace opens it up it lets you know that this is a possibility contained in god i've shared it with you that the grace of god is not redemption no redemption is a subset of god's grace god's grace is a generic description of any and everything that only god can provide it's called his grace so the anointing is god's grace his mercy is a dimension of his grace his love is a dimension of his grace any possibility that should be the experience of men that can only be provided for by god is his grace grace never makes it your experience it creates the potential for redemption for healing for blessing for increase for multiplication but then it takes faith and most people have thought that the only aspect of faith is to believe and confess no sir mm -mm. Mm -mm. no that's only an aspect of faith faith is a generic name given to everything that involves the partnership of man the first key to partnership is finding out the formula god has provided for receiving that miracle understanding it by the help of the spirit and then taking relevant steps in accordance to what he has said this is what the bible calls faith believing is only an aspect of faith confessing is only an aspect of faith that's not all there is to it if you stop there you will be in total shock you can believe that prosperity is your heritage you can confess it is your heritage and stop and don't engage the other forces and you will remain in poverty and penury forever you can believe is god's desire for you to be great listen carefully you can confess that it is god's desire for you to be great and not engage the other forces of greatness value relationships skill and find out you never rest. are we together now yes so when we learn the systems of the kingdom we are bringing ourselves to the point of faith where we are able to act with understanding and intelligence it is only when our obedience is complete that we commit god's integrity and then he is compelled to make it happen this is how angels work angels don't work at random angels signify things revelations 1 verse 1 the bible says the revelation of jesus christ which he gave unto his servant john he said and he sent it and signified it by his angel angels act in accordance to understanding their action accredits that you are doing something right so they don't just act at random just because they are there no there is what to do that engages them because they are governed they are supervised by the holy spirit it is the office of the holy spirit that supervises the operation of angels 
they don't just move anyhow and do everything that your eyes are open in the realm of the spirit and you see them near you is no guarantee they will rescue you hallelujah is god speaking to us and so we must find out the things that we need to understand to help us excel brothers and sisters god sees my heart and how much passion that i have to see every one of us rise In the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain